right, welcome back to another episode of the Falcon Punchcast, episode 9, we're almost at 10. And once again, I am joined with my good friend Darth Messiah, a.k.a. Hamza. Hello, I am the Robin to Falcon Punch's Batman. Yeah. Oh, nice, so you're my, my Robin. Yeah, yeah, I wear the little tiny underwear with no pants and the little booties. Yeah, yeah and I, I force him to eat rats. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Not that version! You have to go with that version! <laughs> yeah. To be fair, they're not, that's not too far off with, like, how fucked up Batman is in the main universe. Because literally there's a scene in, I think, Robin Year One, where uh, he puts a poison in Robin's face. He's like, identify the poison before you get knocked out. And identify the, the poison before... <laughs> <laughs> so, because like he needs to know what each toxic thing is that bad guys will use against them and how to counter it. <laughs> so, uh, that's like, too that's... Much. Damn, that's <laughs> so it's like that's kind of fucked up. <laughs> and he has so many robins. I'm like, all right, new kid. <laughs> I, I'm hoping that Dick Grayson got all the trauma and that he like learned. Although then Jason Todd died, so never mind. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty. Yeah, Jason Todd must have been a bit fucked up too. Yeah. I don't know. I guess Tim Drake got by pretty easily. Yeah, I would guess. Yeah, Tim Drake. Yeah, uh, he had it the easiest. He, he, yeah, my he favorite. Softened. Yeah, I guess he's my favorite Robin. So probably yes. Yeah, I haven't gone that in depth with Batman, so I just have more of a soft spot for uh, Dick Grayson. Um, mm. he's the one I've seen more. Yeah, yeah, I can see that. Yeah, no problem. Mm-hmm. And you know, he turns into Nightwing, so he becomes his own man. <laughs> I mean, I guess Red Hood and Red Robin, but like, I, I feel like Red Hood's kind of a cop out. <laughs> really? <laughs> but well, that... no, like, and it, it, see, I'm just an edgy guy with a red helmet. With, I mean, I haven't properly seen anything of Red Hood past like that movie, know, the movie. So yeah. I can't 100 percent judge him. This is just based off the vibes I'm getting. So I'm not going to yeah. be like a one of those people that like to talk about Superman on the internet without actually knowing anything about Superman. So I'm just going to save my, my reservements with Red Hood until I, <laughs> I check him out. more. Okay. I see that every day now because everyone's talking about Superman Legacy. I mean, it's like, ah, man. You know, Henry Cavill, he was like, serious. This new Superman, he's just going to be boring. Based again, again with the shit. I I don't know. Like, there's so many people obsessed with Zack Zack Snyder. Truly understood these characters. No, he didn't. I just, I hard, I hard disagree. What the fuck? Okay. I don't know. And then, like, I don't. You put Henry Cavill next to like a lot of the other Superman, and like, I like them more. Even like the TV. Like, I've seen clips of like the Lois and Clark or Superman and Lois, whatever the new live action TV show is with the two. I think it's Superman and Lois, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. I think, because I get confused, because I know there was another one in the 90s that also had, like, a similar title. I think yeah, that they, was yeah. also called yeah. The Adventures of Superman, but, like, mm-hmm. all those other Supermen, I'm like, yeah, this is a Superman. Henry Cavill, <laughs> I'm like, this is just, like, a guy with godlike powers. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I like Henry Cavill. I, I think a good actor had the right look you know and everything but it just he wasn't given the best script and the best opportunity to really showcase like because i think he could have he had the opportunity same with bat flick um because i remember like i got a sliver of like the superman feeling and just i never watched the justice league snyder cut mm -hmm. um but like in the justice league movie i got like a sliver of it but then you know he was kind of written out for most of that movie and when it comes back he's brain controlled already yeah, yeah, so there's no... So, like, yeah, I do feel it was, like, Henry Cavill just got unlucky and just had a lost opportunity there. Like, it could have been the... Probably, like, the best Superman portrayal, but, like, again, he just... Yeah. Zack Snyder was there, so... Yeah. yeah. And, like, see, like, I could picture Ben Affleck being a good Batman, too. But like, Yeah, he... same. Yeah. Like, most of the original Justice League, I, I think we're fine for the most part. I'm kind of take it or leave it with Gal Gadot as Wonder Woman. Mm. Um, and then Cyborg just had that one movie, and apparently behind the scenes, it wasn't really a positive experience for him. Yeah, for him. True. Yeah. Ezra yeah. Miller, just even outside the whole controversies, I, I 
really felt nothing with his performance. And, like, I haven't seen the Flash movie, and like it, from what I've heard, it doesn't really do that much better. He's just and, he's just such a departure from Barry Allen. It's like not even uh, it's just Ed, Ezra Miller in a Flash costume. To be honest, it's yeah. See, because I remember most of my Flash experiences was from the TV show, like the CW show, which I watched for like three and a half. Yeah, seasons. and like as does Ezra Miller really like. Him and Grant oh, Gustin no. look like are like compl- like are playing like two completely different people. I don't know. Yeah, who... they're like so <laughs> different. I'm like, what the fuck? This is not my Barry Allen. <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, yeah. Which I'm not sure because you've read the comic books. Is Barry like a I've weird read the, I've read the I've I've read the Wally comics. So oh, like okay. even for me, like I've gotten uh I haven't read Barry like fully yet. Um but still from the from the little I've read of Barry, like it's very because like you know he's in the origin story he's there and and stuff like that um and stuff but like it's it's still it's like again it doesn't it doesn't match the two uh he, they also don't look like him either so like i don't know none of them are like they're both white but like none of them are blonde so that's true <laughs> yeah and then like yeah. oh yeah jason momoa's aquaman is just really weird <laughs> i haven't read i don't aquaman. know why did it just make the guy lobo he wanted to be Lobo. I don't know why. That was Mr. O. Like, yeah. he is, like, so perfect for Lobo. Lobo. It was like Aquaman. I'm like, what the fuck? Yeah. Uh, I, I feel I, they're I, really trying to capture that, like, no, Aquaman's cool, guys. Look, it's Jason Momoa. You like him from Game of Thrones? And look, he's hardcore. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. I just uh, I, I just want to get a, a f- a f- as far away from Zack Snyder's vision of the... The fact that, like, they f- they figured they induced his just leave via email is still, like, pisses me off. I'm like, really? That was the coolest way you could have their, like, first appearance via an email video? Okay. Um, yeah. But either way, that's just a, a small thing. But, like, in general, I, I don't like this. I just can't wait till it's over and James Gunn gets his start, hopefully does something better. I don't like the choices he's made, like, authority already. Um yeah. and stuff. I I would like a just a, you know, a super universe that starts from the basics, preferably animated. Uh, but okay, we're gonna get live action, so like okay, fine. But like you know, and then like you know, you grow and build and move on. Like the, like how MCU Phase One was. Like each one gets their own movie or series of movies. Then they come yeah, together. I really hope they don't dive into multiverse stuff like in this like phase. Like. Yeah, until, like the third phase before, like oh, flashback paradox. To be, to be fair, like you can do, you don't multiverse. You don't have to even touch. There's so many other like problems or like conflicts you can get into before even touching multiverse. Like I get, yeah. I get that's the that's the hot thing right now with Hollywood. Like, oh, multiverse, woo, yeah. But like, uh, you know, like I think it's eventually going to burn itself out, and people will have enough of it. It's already kind of confusing, I bet, for a lot of people. But like, just. Because it's like the biggest thing ever. I think you can do is that like, oh, they're infinite Earths or whatever. So, but like, I think you can like. It's just yeah, it's just kind of getting annoying. Like, I don't want to yeah. be the first like Justice League movie. It's like, oh, Crisis on Infinite Earth. It's like, okay. oh my god, no, please. I mean, that's what it's it, like. Uh, the first Flash movie, I can't believe is Flashpoint or like a version of Flashpoint. So, uh. I I still have not seen that movie. I'll probably wait for it to show up on streaming. I'm never going to watch it. I have too many problems with that movie. Also, I'm not interested. Uh, I, I, I mean, I, I guess don't... there's that too. I'm uh-huh. just... There's there's certain things I just want to see because I'm like, how are you making this work? Like, I, I'm really curious how much of a role... Uh, like, is it really just a Batman movie with Flash on the side or does Flash actually have characters? No, 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 no. Um, Batman shows up for the last 15, 20 minutes. Is that what you've heard, or is this no? Like... From people who've watched the movie, because like I don't care, so I don't care about spoilers. I just want to know how bad it is. Um, it's basically for the majority of the time, it's two Ezra Millers joking and interacting with each other. That sounds miserable. Well, actually, yeah, <laughs> exactly. So, like, that's what you're in well, for. See, I don't know. Maybe they give him better writing in this because I remember in Justice League, I did not find him funny or endearing at all. <laughs> um. From what I've heard, it's just two Ezra Millers. So, like, if you don't like Ezra Miller, you're not going to like this. <laughs> I see. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. We start this. 
okay. I, I, I called myself Robin to your yeah, Batman, yeah, and then we, like we somehow so ended like, up dang, here. We, we just went straight for it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, we didn't even talk about anime or manga. Yeah, or to- yeah. We were just like, yeah. Yeah. I thought we were going to stop there, but then you were like, oh, you picked the rat-eating version. And then I'm like, well, that's not more. It's, it's funny. I, 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 just, <laughs> I just find it funny. Yeah. Like yeah. in my head, Batman just be like, "Robin, you have to eat the rat." It's like, why? <laughs> <laughs> You're a rich man. Alfred could just make me a five course meal. No, in order to become a Dark Knight, you must eat rats. Yeah. For those who don't know, this is not in the main Batman universe. This is a crazy thing Frank Miller wrote. That's like uh, off universe. Uh, so like, yeah, no. But like in that one, like Batman does some crazy shit. Yeah, that like, was he calls himself. Batman, right? Yeah, All Star Batman and Robin the Boy Wonder. That's the full title. <laughs> oh yeah, I forgot. That's actually technically part of the title. Uh, title, yeah, exactly. Did and they make a like a, a animated movie adaptation of that one, or was that just Superman? No, though they only did Superman. The All Star line died after that <laughs> series. That's Star so Batman. weird because, like, <laughs> you know, All Star Superman is often regarded as like one of the best Superman movies. I mean, personally, yeah. you and I, we talked about it in a previous podcast. Yeah, I don't, yeah. I mean, it's good, but I don't think it's that good. Mm-hmm. Um, but you go from that to then what's often regarded as like one of like the worst Batman, <clears throat> co- or at least most controversial. I don't know. It's... From what I heard is that because this came out around the time Marvel's Ultimate Universe was going. So DC was planning a similar thing. And they thought that the All Star Universe could be their uh, their ultimate universe. So All Star Superman comes out big hit that you know smashes every critical record, whatever. Uh, not record, but like you know all the critics love it, all the fans love it, and it becomes instantly a classic and one of the best superhero stories of all time. Uh, Superman stories, my bad, of all time. Uh, then All Star Batman comes out and just in the complete opposite direction. It got delayed. Everyone hated it. It's not technically finished. The last issue hasn't come out still to this day. Uh, oh, really? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I forgot about that part of the lore. Yeah, and then, one. like, uh, because, and then, like, it, it's so memeable because, like, there's so many weird, dumb lines in it. Yeah, the uh, goddamn Batman thing, I always thought was just a meme. I didn't know it was, like, an well, actual line from the comic. <laughs> yeah, so, the like, I mean, the meme has to come from somewhere. So, yeah, that's... Well, you know, the, like, there's those Moon Knight memes of, like, oh, yeah, random bullshit. But, like, those are actually oh, yeah. memes. He doesn't the, the, those really actual memes. Yeah, he doesn't ever, he doesn't ever says that. It's completely fake. Yeah. 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 Uh, so, yeah, that's where that comes. He paints himself yellow to fight Green Lantern, which I'm like, oh, my God. That, okay, jeez. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah. yeah. Okay, all right. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what was going through Frank Miller's head when he like made that. And the sad part is, it has like one of the best Jim Lee art ever. <laughs> so the book looks incredible, but like has the dumbest shit. <laughs> I'm glad I never picked it up because I remember when I was younger, I used to go to Kino Kunia, which is like this really big store that has like, like mm-hmm. books, but for me, primarily comic books and manga. Mm-hmm. And like back in high school, I'm like, I kind of want to get into comic books. But like I was only getting like DC graphic novels, and I was about to pick up All Star Batman, but then mm. I think I wound up get just getting Batman Year One because it was a bit cheap. Oh my god, you picked you made the right choice because <laughs> it was like Frank Miller. Because I remember just like based off really light research, it's like yeah, just read anything by Frank Miller. He's amazing with Batman. I'm like okay, and like All Star, I'm like oh that sounds good. But then it was like oh Batman Year One, it's Year One, it'll probably help me a bit better character. And mm-hmm. then, because I think I already did pick up um, Dark Knight Returns. Ah, right, yeah. Uh-huh. So then I'm like, okay, I'm going to follow that up with year one. Mm-hmm. And then I was going to get to All-Star, and then I kind of just fell off comic books for a bit. Even though, like I've said in previous podcasts, surprisingly, my first ever Batman comic was Batman Venom. Yeah, which is still weird to me. Which is it, when, it's... you know, yeah, when Batman gets hooked on, like, drugs yeah that's tech that canonically the first oh the venom drug uh that's yeah, the, the first bane appearance news. yeah the bane news. is and then they use that story to like make bane like it's canon uh so yeah but okay put it in my perspective you're walking in a bookstore and, oh like, you I see wasn't crazy fa- yeah you see the yeah. crazy batman face yeah. that's i was on in the like cover. borders which in dubai doesn't have really a solid collection of comic books and mangas. I'm just walking through. I see Batman making like the scariest fucking face I've ever seen in my life. I'm like, I have to. And it was like kind of cheap. And like, I was in the mood to buy some kind of comic. Mm. So I bought that. And uh, 
I think I brought it with me on a camping trip. Because <laughs> like I'm too embarrassed for some reason mentally to bring a manga with me to a trip. But I'm like, oh, it's a comic book. Everyone loves comic book characters now. Uh, I, I, that is such a naive thought, but sure. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I'm I'm still kind of like well, actually now I'm even like that with comics, so I actually gotten worse. Um, <laughs> but at least back then, I'm like I'm a high schooler. I could read a comic book. But I can't read a manga in public. So dumb. I, that is so weird. Dude, right? I know my brain's kind of weird like that. Let's <laughs> uh, so, God, I do, you know, the reality is you would make you would be made fun of for both. True. <laughs> Oh, see, no, my parents didn't really mind me reading Batman, but I'm sure if they saw me like reading One Piece, they're like, "What? What do you? What is this?" Uh, oh my god! You know what? I just realized. My dad might watch the One Piece live action show, and they want to talk to me about it. Be like, Dad, it's all bullshit. <laughs> I can't have that conversation with my dad. He won't understand. Like, okay, all right. Yeah, I can't boy. really have that conversation. Oh, oh see, I, I, I don't think my mom would care because I remember way back in the day, I wanted to be a filmmaker. Yeah, you told me about I this. I wanted yeah. to be like a movie director. Mm-hmm. I didn't because the more I researched into it, because I wanted to be a film director because like, oh, it's full creative freedom. And then I had this course in high school that really made you like research like a job you were into, like, you know, how are you going to go to school? How are you going to get educated for it? What's the mm-hmm. job like? What's the, the stability like? Can you... <laughs> If you're more concerned about family, does it have a work-life balance? All that. Mm. The more and more I research into directing, I'm like, oh my god, this is terrible. There is no <laughs> freedom. That's all up to the producers. And that's yeah, like it's all up long... to the producers. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, you could catch a lucky break or not in the, 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 the Director's Guild and this. I'm like, oh, okay, never mind. Fuck that. I'm done. <laughs> um, oh, but yeah. I remember, because like we discussed in the previous podcast, one of my favorite video games is Spyro. And my mom's oh. like, yeah, you can make a Spyro live action movie. I'm like, mom, no, Spyro wouldn't work in live action. It's like, oh, she, like, she kind of got mad at me. It's like, oh, you're just not being creative enough. I'm like, no, if I was going to do a Spyro movie, it would be animated. Yeah, and, true, like, true. We got true. in like a slight argument about that because like, I, I didn't see, I wasn't creative enough to bring Spyro into live action. <laughs> so I guess when you when we're asking like who's watching these live action Disney movies, yeah, I mean, I will. I spoke to Shaheen earlier, like, because I asked my sister, who's like my litmus test, to see like what the normie crowd thinks, because like my sister is like a full on normie. So I showed her the One Piece trailer. She's like, "Yeah, it looks kind of childish, but it still looks fun." I'll, you know, I think I'll watch it. And she and she told me like she tries anything, anything that's Netflix original and new. Most of the time, she like watches it. I'm like, okay. I mean, well, you know. The One Piece anime is on Netflix. You can just like watch. You don't have to wait for this. You can just watch that. I just like I don't watch anime. But what if it's a Netflix original anime? <laughs> the, I think I think the title of anime will turn her off more than the Netflix so she, original. She won't just turn it on and be like, "Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna watch Devilman Cry Baby." <laughs> yeah. Oh, 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 she wouldn't. She would hate Devilman. She hated like. James Gunn's Suicide Squad. She's like, oh my god, that was way too weird. Like, what the fuck, Polka Dot Man? Oh, so weird. And then so I'm like, ah, oh, if I showed her Devilman Crybaby or Jojo or Berserk, like, she would just, like, lose her mind. Like, <laughs> I mean, I always get it. It's a tough sale. That brings me back um, to a conversation I wanted to have in an earlier podcast, uh, but, like, I guess the timing didn't work out, but we'll make it work this time. Okay. So I remember when, like, Creed 3 was coming out? Um, you know, Michael B. Jordan's a really big anime fan. Yeah. And so he made like a starter's guide to get into anime, but it was just all shonen. It was like, you know, Naruto, <laughs> Dragon Ball Z, and like uh, Hajime no Ippo and stuff like that. Like, <laughs> not that those are bad anime. They're all good and they can work fantastic as a gateway. For many people, that was a gateway. But yeah. like, you know, in fact, for a while, a I think that was like, guide, like, that was the like only gateway for a while maybe possibly like exactly yeah i mean mm-hmm. definitely like dragon ball naruto were like yeah that was like people's crack back in the day <laughs> yeah um and i guess still is to this day considering that both franchises are still pretty prevalent in the industry mm-hmm. um but like it, i mean first of all to make a proper starter guy to anime because then i remember a bunch of people were cr- criticizing that and other people were trying to make better versions of it first of all it's, it's kind of hard to 
make a starter guide to anime because it's such a diverse fucking yeah medium. i think the days of making starter guides are pretty much over because again it's easily available like at the time it's just like okay the community is small we don't know the full like diverse nature of the shows we don't know what's legal what's not legal and so here are the few that everyone talks about and everyone watches and like but now that it's it's so prominent so it's like it's like oh here's a movie starter pack like why would you need a movie starter pack just pick a movie that looks interesting and watch it same thing here like pick an anime that looks interesting and watch it it's like, like i could kind of understand it for mm-hmm. like a certain genre or for like a big franchise um even though at least in terms of movie franchises like just watch the um <laughs> like i i kind of i, I kind of get it but like i remember back in the day and i wanted to make a video on it i don't think i ever made the video on it because um, mm-hmm. i have like almost like 400 videos i've had on my channel um so i'm not sure this is like all my early days back when i used to just record myself in front of a camera i wanted to make like a starter guide because like way back then i remember people it was back when like anime wasn't as widely beloved as it is right now like mm-hmm. you know you know anime is kind of approaching normie status you know or at, to some people it already has um, yeah mm-hmm. yeah for my sister it hasn't but like yeah you could for some other people it might have yeah the fact that we're having a big high budget netflix one piece thing i i feel kind of sells it at this point and yeah but then you have my sister who's like oh it's live action now okay i'll watch it now I anime mean, just the that. fact that we're getting it like holly no. like people up there are seeing like okay you know this anime stuff yeah yeah <laughs> there's money all right yeah. hollywood all right everyone superheroes are out it's all about this anime yeah yeah <laughs> um, uh, mm-hmm. anyway so go- going back to that because I remember there used to be like this massive crowd. Because again, when it comes to anime and cartoons and tokusatsu and video games, there's always a bunch of people that are really insecure. Not like me where I just want to hide it and enjoy it to myself. There's people that are insecure and like, no, I'm a big person. I'm an adult for liking this stuff. So let me just recommend you the most foul and violent stuff. Because like, I remember I used to see starter guides for anime. It's like, yeah, Berserk, Helsing. Elf and lead high school of the dead. I'm like, what are you doing? That's going to, <laughs> that's going to turn some people. Now you're going to boost the 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 stereotype of like, oh okay, yeah, anime is for kids and weird psychosexual perverts. <laughs> See, and that would only work for a person who is who's like, man, I love hardcore bloody shit. It's like, okay, that's the perfect starter pack for that guy. I like again, it's all based around like, what's your interest? What do you like? What do you not like? Like, yeah. Yeah, it's like, you know, age, demographic, interest, like all that feeds into like yeah. what kind of anime is out there for you. I don't think you can really make a definitive starter guide. It's like, oh, I'm within this age range. Like, you know, obviously, I mean, I know there's a lot of kids that were reading Berserk way too young. Mm-hmm. I was one of them. But, <laughs> um, you know, like I'm not going to be recommending personally, you know, kids to go read Berserk and Oisami Pun Pun and stuff like that. Like I'd probably be like, no, go, you know, read, uh, you know, Naruto and all like Shonen stuff. And unless that. you want to be the cool YouTuber who's like, yeah, kids, go read Berserk. Yeah, get traumatized. I mean, that's essentially me. I'm, I'm not like really policing people on my YouTube channel. Like when I make a hardcore video, mm-hmm. just be like, yeah, if you like this stuff, read it. But like. Yeah, yeah. Only and then after if you're that, 21 plus. <laughs> and then after that, watch the V Cinema. <laughs> oh, God. It's like Kamen Rider. For those that don't know, with tokusatsu shows and the Kamen Rider Super Sentai, they will have like these things called V Cinemas, which are kind of like, I'm assuming like straight to DVD. Yeah, straight to Blu ray, like spin off or sequels to the main, like Kamen Rider Sentai show. Yeah. And a lot of them are like. A, more violent and occasionally sexual than like the TV show would ever allow. And yeah, because it, it, it I be guess because it's not it's not on like you know national television, so there's no like censorship from the network. So they're like, well, fuck it, let's go crazy. Because <laughs> like for example, the one because I, I haven't watched that many V cinemas, but the one that always sticks to my mind is for Kira Major, which was a really fun Sentai. I feel like if you're trying to get into Sentai, it's a great uh, starting off point. It's mm-hmm. newer. Uh, really fun cast of characters and action, cool costumes, all that good stuff. Um, 
the main character is like the sweetest guy in the world. He's just this happy-go-lucky kid that just wants to draw. Really sweet kid. I refuse to believe he exists in the same world that the V Cinema takes place. <laughs> v Cinema has like the evil general kind of like on her way to like the afterlife, escapes, kind of resurrects herself, steals the girlfriend of the Red Ranger, and they get into some weird like battle with like organ harvesting yakuza that like operate a maid cafe and you clearly see them organ like harvest the organs like you just see like a a device go over someone's stomach and just like rip out guts uh and all that and um for like a show that was kind of meant for kids and what? very positive and fun and happy-go-lucky imaginative uh to go from that to like you know, organ harvesting yakuza operating a maid cafe. It's a, uh, it's pretty jarring. What, what, what the fuck? Oh my god. Okay, because like I just saw the Common Rider Zero One V Cinemas, and I like, oh. I can safely say like, okay, it fits in the universe, but the story itself is bad. Uh, but like, I know this seems like night and day, like different. <laughs> yeah, I mean, even with like Common Rider build for like the <laughs> the, the Common Rider Rogue specials. <laughs> Like that, you just see a guy get beat up, bloody in prison, and then he decapitates a guy. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Something happens. I think they take the freedom a bit too far. And I don't know. It just seems that, like, I don't know, maybe they hate writing, like, the children's version show. This is a show they actually want to make. Like, even for Common Rider O's, I saw a review for the O's anniversary, which apparently oh, people God. hated yeah. and, like, people yeah. walked out of. And it's like it's post-apocalyptic. The world's already dead. You know, the, all the main characters of the show are like freedom fighters now with big ass guns. And it's it's like what the fuck? Like why? Like there's no explanation. You didn't give an explanation for this. Um, yeah, I don't know. The V Cinemas hmm. try so hard to be edgy. It's almost like if I were to make a straight to video like Ben Ten cartoon, and then like it comes out and like Ben Ten is like decapitating people and having sex. <laughs> it's almost to that extent. Extent, yeah, exactly. Like that oh, yeah, that is the equivalent. Ah, uh, jeez. Um, yeah, so it's it's very very strange, and this is something that baffled us. I think it just comes out of that, like, okay, there's no censorship. It's a straight to DVD. But then I imagine that, like, if the sh- if these shows are being aimed for kids, then parents would complain like, because, like, if there's if they're in, and they're a big hit, and like you know they want these kids to be fans, and they want the moms of the kids to be fans. And if they like, so if they advertise it, like, hey, uh, you know, like, let's say your child loves Common Rider Zero One, and you as the parent love it as well. So anytime your kid asks, you like oblige, like, okay, let's get the Common Rider Zero One belt or toy or whatever. Then they advertise like, hey, new new story, new movies out. Obviously, the kid's like, oh, I want to see the movie. Then you buy it because you think about it's Common Rider Zero One, it's going to be the same thing. And, and then they watch it, and you see all this like dark shit. <laughs> But see, yeah. I, so, I, would you, so would you, so would you, as a parent, complain? Like, what the fuck are you making? With, like, in these Blu-rays? Yeah, yeah that's true. It, it's just, I don't know. But then I also wonder because like, that same kid is probably reading like Shonen Jump, right? Mm, yeah, maybe. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, like you know, Shonen Jump right now, you have like Sakamoto Days, and like Jujutsu Kaisen, which pretty much do the same thing. It's just in comic form true true yeah so, so. it's just it, i guess it's totally jarring because i would imagine if i was a kid you know like, can you imagine being like when we were like small kids and we were watching like justice league unlimited and everything and then all of a sudden like someone puts in front of us like injustice like, oh, <laughs> what the fuck is superman doing oh no <sighs> yeah i don't know maybe maybe we're too uh, maybe we're too sensitive or something i, I don't know maybe that's the case because like i mean we see, maybe we are it's just so stuck in our heads that this is for kids, and we're using our like North American standards of what's for kids. Maybe I don't know. Japan has a different view of it. I don't know. Probably. Uh, I mean, it's not like super explicit. It's not like I'm seeing guts spill out and yeah. like titties. <laughs> yeah. Also, but then you see things like that common writer Oni uh, show that got complaints, and the show had to change because it got complaints where parents were like, "This is too dark." Uh, then oh, you hear yeah, stories Hibiki. like, yeah, he yeah. So you hear stories like that. So that's like, I, man, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. then I think, kid, like, 
parents were kind of upset, even though the character was like the complete opposite of that stereotype. I think they were like upset with Gentaro and Forze for being kind of like looking like a delinquent, which is why we'll never get a delinquent Sentai because people have been really wanting like a Boncho kind of Sentai and all that. Oh, really? I thought I thought they wanted. Yeah, okay, I guess. Yeah. Uh huh. So even yeah. though Gen- like, if you just watch the show, Gentaro just wants to be friends with everyone, so he's not really yeah. like good. A- delinquent but I guess yeah but he doesn't still... have the same like uniform as everybody else and uh which I, they just I... like the, the teachers just give up at some point because they well, tell see, them like it, it makes me wonder because like <laughs> what what are the standards there for like the tv shows and then like manga because i'm pretty sure those same kids could go out and read jojo's bizarre adventure and see jotaro mm, right it yeah way worse yeah, then like you then Shonen Jump was releasing Chainsaw Man, uh, which that is too. way too adult. Like I would say for, uh, I mean, it's not sure. like super. Is there guts in Chainsaw Man? Yes. Either, okay, yeah. But there is. Come on. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're a bigger fan than me. <laughs> I know. I'm trying. To, I'm trying. Well, see, because like, well, yeah, even Hunter Hunter. Will have like brains coming out of them. Oh, really? I, I didn't know yeah, that. Like, oh. the <laughs> Ant arc. But yeah, Kimber yeah. Ant arc is like. See, because that's interesting. Because like, I feel like manga could get away with a lot more than what, like, I guess can be allowed on TV. Yeah, maybe because it is manga and it's like a cartoon, and I'm using cartoon in qu- quotes. People don't care. Like, you know, animes kind of get censored too, in that sense. Like, oh yeah, yeah. That uh, Terraform Mars was like censored to shit. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Chainsaw know? Man, like, <laughs> I mean, it was pretty bloody, but I don't think it was as uh, nasty as like some of the shit we got in the manga. Mm. Yeah. Oh, huh. strange. I don't get it. Yeah. Well, then again, I guess you know, comics in the U.S. too, they could get away with a lot more than what we're going to be showing. Uh, I, I don't know. Comics don't get paid attention to, so and still viewed as kids shit. So uh, I don't know. Which is weird because I feel like if you're actually looking at all the comics coming out, they're more aimed at adults than kids these days. Yeah, I know. Nowadays, and pa- uh, parents that are like comic book fans and they want to introduce their kids to comics, having a hard time to like recommend them DC or Marvel because like. You know, like I said, there's, uh, you know, a superhero story that's in canon where a superhero, female superhero gets raped. So, like, I don't know, like, what to. Or even in Batman Year One, like, there are prostitutes, G- Jim Gordon uh, cheats on his wife. Like, it's, like, there's, there's a lot of stuff in it. Like, it's. Yeah, Batman, like, I think it would be harder for, like most parents consider. yeah but then like but then you put on the batman animated series and it's completely fine yeah <laughs> so again i feel like for some parents these days even the animated series you like like tv PG. oh would you show batman 89 michael keaton i mean i didn't even like that movie that much but <laughs> that, okay that's a, okay you're gonna get canceled for that <laughs> oh no i, I think I've, I've talked about i i've I'm so whatever. Like I like the set design. Mm-hmm. Um, that's it. And then like what some about of Danny Elfman's music? What about Batman I, Returns? I, a, I didn't see that. A Catwoman, Penguin. Come on. No. I, oh, I, I okay. Didn't see it. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. Man, Penguin maybe might be worth it because oh, I thought you were gonna say Catwoman might be worth it because like Michelle Pfeiffer in that like costume. Goddamn. <laughs> I guess, but I just like the way like the penguins just like this fucked up little guy. <laughs> <laughs> just like o- only only you like there's a hot girl in like a black latex suit, and you're like, ah oh, no, but this weird monster guy. <laughs> I'm like, okay, listen, let me, let me see. I remember like there's a lot of different Catwoman like movie designs, so let me see if like, this is, like the good one. Because I remember there's this one where I'm like, oh, it kind of looks like ass. Uh, I think that might be the Nolan one because that didn't look great. Yeah, that one was pretty bad. Yeah, <laughs> actually, I don't know. I've seen like a lot of Catwoman designs. I don't like like a lot of the Batman the animated series designs. Like, there's elements I like, but overall, like, I wasn't a fan. Like, there wasn't really like, a perfect Catwoman design I've seen in like animated or live action. Oh, okay. To I, me right. personally. Okay, yeah, because I was I was about to mention the comics, and I could mention costumes, but like, yeah, those are different. Uh, so yeah, okay. Of course, if I type in Catwoman costume, I'm getting like cosplay. 
<laughs> I actually, I'm thinking I'm getting more cosplay than I am actual like. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, the the evolution of Catwoman's iconic cat suit. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, oh, oh, maybe you're a black cat person. Maybe that's why. She's a little bit more open with her priorities. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh god how did we okay, get so here okay so this one's a bit better even though like i find the stitching kind of weird i mean that's what it's supposed to be it's supposed to be a stitched together like made crazily uh thing to me uh. it looks too much like a sex thing yeah i mean yeah i mean tim Bur- i mean tim burton's putting his fetish he's, she has a whip i mean she's always had a whip but like with this costume the whip makes it like uh <laughs> you know God, I'm seeing how like the Anne Hathaway one was. That just looks like discount cosplay. Yeah, uh, you know what? I I completely forgot because I don't consider it like a proper Catwoman thing. It's because it's not even like you know, uh, Selena Kyle. It's just somebody else. The Halle Berry Catwoman costume that sucked. <laughs> you know the Nolan Bat trilogy. I feel like I need to rewatch at some point. I watched Dark Knight numerous times but begins mm. in um what's the third one called oh dark knight rises yeah rises rises mm. and uh and and begins i've like mm. i think i've only seen them just the one time mm. no oh, interesting yeah i i love i love begins and dark knight rises was eh for me but like those two are really really good i think begins was the first ever batman movie i saw in cinemas and uh <laughs> One funny story, which I think I was told to is that like when we got out of the movie, me and my dad were like hyping over, like, oh my god, that was such a good movie. That's like it had so many cool scenes, blah blah blah. And my mom was there and she was like, Yeah, it was the movie was good, but I don't understand. Why did everybody want to kill this Gotham guy? Or what did he do? <laughs> <laughs> and me and my dad both face <laughs> Oh god. Yeah, my, yeah. I think mine I, I somehow missed begins in theaters. I saw it later on TV. Um I don't know how. Um, really? Because it was a big deal when it was coming out. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's weird. I don't know how I missed mm-hmm. out. Um, yeah, but I oh, did see way, Dark Knight in theaters. You you seen Dark Knight in theaters? Yeah, I saw Dark Knight in theaters. I saw it with my cousin. Mm. Uh, I remember. I, I was like, please don't show Two Faces face. Please don't show Two. I was like, because I was like, I was a kid, so I was like dead scared of seeing that face. Oh, okay. Yeah. I thought I thought you were being like, oh, it's probably going to look like shit. Oh no! I was like terrified. Like uh, my, my 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 cousin who was with me was also terrified. And anytime yeah, he, was on, was cool. yeah, <laughs> he was on, yeah, he was on. No, Two Face was on screen. He would put the popcorn box like in front of his face because like he couldn't bear watching. <laughs> yeah, I think that was kind of like it, towards the end of my phase of being scared of anything where I fully accepted. Because like when I was like a little kid, man, I was fucking scared of anything. <laughs> I, I remember the Blue's Clues fucking Halloween special. I'd have to like hide in the closet while watching it. Blue? You were scared of Blue's Clues? There was like this little ghost that would say boo and he would freak me out. <laughs> oh my god. I, it was really bad. And then like I love the Gremlins movies now. But I remember as a kid I had the VHS for the first Gremlins movie. The fact like the the the, the VHS cover scared me and it was like so bad. That, like, I actually, like, I think I snuck the VHS, like, under my shirt as we were going to, like, my cousin's house. And then I just hid it in my cousin's room. Because I it scared me that we had it in my house. <laughs> it's so funny because, like, you're the so opposite now. Like, you like horror. Um... <laughs> well, see, that's the weird thing. I'm like, I like special effects and monsters, but I don't like actually being scared. Oh, I hate jump okay. scares. Mm-hmm. I hate, like, if I'm playing a video game and there's, like, a, an enemy that's just, like, jumping up and yelling at me. Do not like that. <laughs> um, oh. Uh, not really the biggest fan of horror movies unless I know it's, like, a you know, like a monster or something, but if it's like straight up like psychological horror, I'm like, no, thank you. Don't <laughs> overthink at night. Um, for the longest time, I was terrified of Chucky and I hated porcelain doll. 
things. I made my mom get rid of her porcelain doll collection. Oh, I she! I didn't know this. Uh, uh, see, I'm I, still I, not a fan of like dolls and puppets. Like all that, you could just burn. <laughs> I'm watching the Chucky movies right now. I think I saw see, one. Now I've go- gone old enough. I'm like, okay, maybe I could check it out. Confront the the, the old the old fear. <laughs> but yeah, man, I don't know that that like as I'm, I'm trying to think when I got out of that phase. I was probably like late middle school where i like i decided to toughen up during halloween and like there's this one channel that was like showing halloween movies it was like hellraiser some random friday the 13th movie i'm I'm gonna watch both of them and i'm not gonna be scared (laughs) and they were both all right but then i've heard like i've heard both of those movies aren't really necessarily like scary scary they're not like hereditary or midsummer which those might be a little too much for me I didn't like Midsummer. It was it was too unrelatable for me. But yeah, Hereditary is terrifying because it's about mental health in a way, which is like a bit too real. So <laughs> okay, actually, if you want to know how bad it is, do you remember Jeff the Killer, like that creepy pasta? No, I don't. Uh... Okay, so there's like this creepy pasta that was going on called Jeff the Killer. I I didn't really pay attention to the creepy pastas like Slenderman and all that. But like, mm-hmm. there's like this picture of Jeff the Killer. And I remember it just creeped me out. <laughs> this is way too old to like. Actually, I'm going to say how old I was. Actually, I guess technically, if you get my age, you could probably calculate how old I was. Anyways, <laughs> the image was so ingrained to my head. It creeped me out any time I saw it. And like, I always had to cover all my curtains when I went to sleep. Like, I was really adamant about it. I felt like that character would be like looking at me as I went to sleep, and I, you know, I was sleeping on like the second floor, so like no way that would happen. Which that is a big fear of mine of something looking into my room as I sleep. That is a massive fear. Mm, Yeah, I I could, I, I I could, uh, jeez. Then don't watch the Guillermo del Toro uh, uh, Cabinet of Curiosities. (laughs) Okay, that's something on there. In one of the episodes this woman is sleeping and she can hear like, you know, ghosts and voices and like things staring and passing by oh, her dude, door. Like my, my brothers love watching. What is, what is it called? Like Mr. Nightmare on YouTube. I don't know. I never heard of this. It's just this guy that will just talk about scary stories on the internet. Oh, okay. <laughs> He'll just read it in a creepy voice. Like the man walked out the door. Little did he know it was the last time he would walk out the door. <laughs> Some shit like that. I don't know. I, yeah. I usually uh, go to the other room when they're playing. Because like, yeah. the thing is, I have an overactive imagination. So like when I'm sleeping, like I'll be fine watching it. You know, I'll be all cool. The moment it's time for me to go to sleep, that's when I'm like, I'm going to get stabbed to death. Or if something's looking at me, or if something's like under my bed. <laughs> so, Does that still happen or... Uh... Probably not. Ugh. I know I don't like being scared because my dad loves like if I'm like the last one to enter the house when we go out as a family, he will hide in a corner to scare me, which is dangerous for him because you know how everyone has like a fight or flight response. Yeah, you have a fight response. <laughs> I I almost pushed my dad down the stairs one time. <laughs> I was coming down the stairs. He was hiding near the stairs. He scared me. I automatically like pushed him. And, like, luckily he grabbed onto the railing. Um, <laughs> otherwise, like, I might have just accidentally killed yeah. my dad. I remember um, people trying to scare you in uni, and you would, like, almost hit them. <laughs> I, I did hit a couple people. Uh, oh, really? Bad at, but I I warned everyone. But by warning them, oh, let's go do it for the lols. And then, they got a text, <laughs> then they got a textbook to the skull, and they're like, oh, no, he was being fucking for real. <laughs> I almost threw a knife at my brother. What? I was baking one day. I was making like chocolate chip cookies and I had my earphones in so I couldn't hear that well. Mm-hmm. And my brother decides to like randomly open the door really fast and like yell some goofy shit at me. And I got so startled at the knife I had in my hand that I was using the like, big cut like the chocolate chunks. I was like so close to just throwing it. Oh, I thought you actually threw it and it missed or something. No. no. <laughs> I don't know why that's a fight. <laughs> that's why I'm like, because sometimes my little brother is like, oh, would you like to go to like a haunted house with me? I'm like, 
for my safety and their safety, I think it's really good. I don't. Oh, know. you would just punch start, the actor in the face. I will start. I would turn into the Doom guy. <laughs> just start like beating the shit out of everyone there. I'm like, sir, you have to get out of here. Like, it's fair. Oh my god! The only time for me was that um, I don't know why. I think it was because it was just on TV and my parents were watching it. They're watching the show Bones, um, and there was an episode where. This lady was, uh, I think, practicing witchcraft, if I'm not mistaken. And she had just a giant spike on the wall. I don't know why there was a spike on the wall, but I'm pretty, pretty sure in context there was a reason why. Uh, but then turns out that the wife was pushed into the spike on the wall and died. Um, and then uh, it was by the husband. Like It was found out that he was the one who did it. Uh, and that episode scared me so much. I went into the other room and I put on Barney just to like negate the horror show that I just saw. <laughs> uh, and I think I was like, I don't know how old I was. I think it was 10 maybe, which I was like, basically I was way too old to be watching Barney. Like I should have been like aged out of it and passed it, but I'm like, you know what? No, I need something positive and like just like a complete show. Yeah, I know I'm not going to cover the show, but I just need something that's like, What's the direct most opposite of what I just saw? And like Barney was the first thing that came to mind, so I just put that on. <laughs> oh, so you actively sought out Barney? You know, I actively sought out Barney. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. I yeah, thought yeah. you just like turned on the TV. It was there. It was like no, 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 no. no. I specifically oh, okay. no, because the TV in my parents' room was the only one that was connected to like cable or whatever. Uh, the ki- TV in my bedroom was like you know it just connected to like the DVD player and the VCR player and whatever. That's it. Like and the PS2 and stuff. Uh, so it, it's not connected to satellite. So I l- actively searched out the like, whatever Barney VHS or disc, whatever I had, and I put it on just to like give me something that's just not that. And like you know, like maybe what's the opposite of that? Yeah, it's exactly. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm. See, I'm not sure how I'm like because like. Okay, going back to the Jeff the Killer thing when I was scared of that, that, that was in university. <laughs> so like. We were talking to each other. I'll be like oh, practically my. like closing the curtains in my room. I'm like, I don't want anything peeking at me when I'm going to sleep. So, oh my god, cheating that is way too. Old. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, man, because like as I'm sleeping, I'm like, oh, what if this fucker is like looking at me when I'm sleeping? <laughs> my god, my mind will create like the most fucked up scenarios. Wait, so then can you read Junji Ito or no? That's the thing. I read Uzumaki and um, Gyo. Yeah. And I enjoyed them. They were just fun, kind of weird, and kind of (laughs) silly. Huh, interesting. See, manga doesn't really freak me out that much, as much as like a visual medium, I think. I mean, manga manga is a visual medium, technically. I mean, like an audio-visual. Oh, okay. All right, yeah. Mm -hmm. Sorry, yeah, (laughs) audio-visual. I mean, there there's some, like, manga scenes that stick out to me that are, like, kind of horrifying, but it's not like I'm going to lose sleep over it. Like, I know there's this uh, Tezuka manga called um, Alabaster, uh, mm. which is apparently one of the only works of his that he was never proud of. Uh, and, like, he kind of wished it just went away. But the whole plot of it, I made a video on it a long time ago, but there's, like, this guy who goes to prison... One guy offers him a deal. It's like, yeah, I'll get you out of prison and like gives him like an invisible like ray kind of thing. But mm-hmm. it kind of malfunctions and it makes his skin translucent. Um, uh, I'm looking at pictures right now. Okay. Ooh, that is uh, uncomfortable. Yeah. So then he kind of becomes like a super villain. He's just going around like trying to get the true ugliness out of the world. So he's just like going around making people's skin translucent and stuff like that. And it kind of turns into a madman. Um mm. So there's this one panel towards the end where, like, it, I guess in his hideout, he has a bunch of animals that he's, like, experimented the invisible ray on. And it's, like, this elephant, but you can only see, like, its head and its, like, bones. And, like, it's, the it's way it's drawn and how he's just, like, this character has kind of perverted the beauty of nature that's always kind of haunted me. But it's not like, oh, shit, like, I'm losing sleep over it, but... <laughs> You know, like it's kind of spine chilling for the moment, or like the first time you ever see, like, um, you know, the Emperor Getter in the Getter manga, 
uh, that was pretty spine chilling. And I could think back to that, but again, it's not like I'm going to take that piece of manga and like hide it in my cousin's house. Uh, okay. Uh, interesting. Cause I'm looking at it. Yeah, it is unsettling. And uh, as I'm looking through the images, because it's Alabaster, one piece episode of Alabaster posters also there in the search. <laughs> yeah, I figured. I mean, for yeah. the longest time, I, I remember I, when I would Google it back before it was like more popular. It, mm. it was like that. Um, yeah. but I, I honestly felt that was a really good manga, despite like Tezuka's feelings on it. I mean, Spielberg I has stated that. he regrets making Temple of Doom. He oh, said, really? Well, yeah, no, he said it, it's like, he feel because like, it was controversial at the time, because people thought it went too far, and Spielberg, I think, like, uh, maybe he self-reflected or agreed, I can't remember what it was, but yeah, he regrets making oh, uh, Temple of Doom. Yeah, because he, even he agreed that, like, yeah, he may he maybe have gone too far with it. Nah, man. <laughs> that's why i agree like i love temple of doom but like he that's just how he feels yeah so i'm like ah, i mean that's how he feels so like what can you do oh well, see like tezuka hit alabaster it's like oh it's too negative and everything i'm like my dude you've made more like depressing and darker stories like there's the whole thing with apollo love story where a guy just gets cursed for like cursing love so he lives out multiple lives where he like falls in love and it's like tragically ripped away from him over and over again <sighs> Uh, maybe because it was just that visually bad. That's why. I, maybe who knows? Maybe. And there's like <laughs> this one character that kind of brings up race in Alabaster. So maybe I don't know. Maybe that he also didn't like. Mm, yeah. Mm, maybe. Yeah. Huh? Who or knows? Maybe like, oh, I don't agree with those thoughts anymore. Because it was like one of those characters, like, yeah, Japanese people are ugly and blah blah blah. They can't be beauty like me. I'm Greek and like goes into why, a racist. Well, okay, why does Japan self? racist itself because like you told me that like even in mad bull 34 there's a lot of things like that so like i don't i, I don't know because i think there's even like an, a sci-fi ishinomori manga that goes into that detail <laughs> and then like there's and god mazinger i mean i that one i don't think is self-hating but then god the end of god mazinger it's like yeah the japanese people are aliens we're descendants <laughs> of an alien race <laughs> Which that I don't know how to take. If that's like self-loathing or like, um, oh, putting yourself better than everybody else yeah, or something. Like, oh, yeah. yeah, we're better than everyone else. We're fucking aliens. <laughs> yeah. oh, we're piloted of, I mean, god machines. We've moved past it like so much, but we started with it. Creed has a comic book out right now. Oh, it does? Yeah, it does. I did not yeah. know that. Yeah, I know it's, it's by, getting an anime and all it, that. But. It's by it's by Boom Studios. It's ten years after the events of the blockbuster Creed three. Amara Creed is on her own path, stepping outside her father Adonis Creed's shadow and training like there's no tomorrow. Yeah. Okay, so they're really going forward with like the whole like oh this is a new generation. Yeah, this is like, it's like the Creed universe, I guess now. Yeah. The Creed verse. The Creed verse. Yeah, yeah. So I just wanted to point that out. It's the first yeah. issue is out right now. You can. Buy I wonder it. if it's going to go over the top as like Rocky. <laughs> I mean, the Creed movies haven't. They've been pretty. Serious. It's going to be getting an anime and comic book. It's like, okay, oh, it now has we're to. going to fight like a cyborg wrestler. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, considering Michael B. Jordan is a fan of Shonen. I... Mm. But this is this, the wrong franchise. This guy has maybe. lion DNA in <laughs> oh, 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 God. Or we're they gonna... go the Baki path. It's like, we found a Neanderthal. We're going to unfreeze him. And then he was going to teach him boxing. <laughs> go fight him in the ring. <laughs> Oh God! Oh. So, are you saying that at some point, Creed can piss and come at the same time? <laughs> okay, for for those not in the know <laughs> of that reference, like there's this weird, I don't know, because like Baki manga scatulations in certain websites are like fucking weird, like. So, like, I was reading Baki on this one website, and they were randomly inputting, like, I guess this one shot that the creator of Baki um, worked on, where he was, like, making the ultimate superhero. <laughs> and, it, like, the first chapter just focuses on this army guy. And he's like, yeah, I have this beast inside of me. Like, I'm the best, and I'm going to be, like, the strongest soldier in the world. And, like, Captain America and the Hulk are, like, bitches compared to me. <laughs> and that's when the first... 
like <laughs> chapter ends. I'm like, okay. He like name dropped and draws the characters. I'm like, okay. So like, what's what's Itagaki? You know, what's he trying to do here? What's the <laughs> ultimate superhero? In the next chapter, the guy's peeing. And I'm like, okay, the classic Itagaki, kind of like weird, bizarre piss fetish. <laughs> then he's sitting in the army plane. He's like, what really makes me special is that I can piss and come at the same time. And then he does it. And everyone around him is like, oh my god. Can you imagine the relief? And then that's when I tapped out. <laughs> Oh, you tapped out. I thought you went and continued on. No, that's when I'm like, okay, Itagaki, this is... <laughs> How is your furry daughter less de- like less depraved than you right now? Wait, what do you mean furry his daughter? Uh, Itagaki's daughter is uh, Paru Itagaki, who did Beastars. Oh! Whoa, that is weird. Oh, uh, so it's funny she has like a, a autobiography manga yeah where she draws her dad her dad's like this massive gorilla man <laughs> um but no b stars is fantastic i like i read it like two years ago and i was really like surprised how fucking amazing uh that manga was no but uh, I, i'm just because like the most like Punchy, punchy, turn your brain off, dumb shit happens constantly, manga, it technically produced the most, like, I, I haven't read it, but I can assume, like, social commentary, polit- political, like, uh, what else is there? there? I don't know. Uh, sexual Sweet. something. His. <laughs> no, like, I'm talking about Beastars. <laughs> oh. oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, like, Baki technically produced Beastars, in a way. Like author wise, at least. Well, see, like towards the end of B stars, they kind of get into like more fighting and everything like that. I'm like, okay, that's when the influence is coming in. <laughs> oh. Oh. I, I just, <laughs> what are the conversations like between those two? <laughs> like, they're both mangaka, uh, and then there's like, <laughs> it's so weird. It's like. Knowing that, like, the guy that made Mad Max Fury Road also made Happy Feet. True. <laughs> yeah, it's like, it's like, what? Okay. Yeah. Because, like, most creatives, you could kind of tell, like, okay, like, I, I see a very clear line in, like, the work you make. But then, like, with that, it's like, wait, what? <laughs> what happened to you? Yeah, uh, it's, it's so bizarre uh, to me. Like, even for, uh, like, uh, I forgot the author's name, but the mangaka that made Lone Wolf and Cub also made like oh. Lady Snowblood and Crying Freeman. It's the... <laughs> well, see, like I don't know. I feel like there's a little bit more of a through line there. But then he also did Mad Bull Thirty Four, and then Hanapa Bazooka with Go Nagai, and like, both of those. <laughs> I'm like, what the fuck just happened? <laughs> and Hanapa Bazooka apparently Go Nagai just drew it, but like the way that series reads. It just feels like a go nagai joint. I'm like, what did Kazuo Koike do here? <laughs> Kazuo Koike, that's the name. Yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh. Uh, that, that manga made me never look at fingers the same way again. At least the way go nagai draws fingers. Um, Why? What's so. There, there's this chapter, because like the whole plot of Hanapa Bazooka is there's like this guy. I kind of forgot it. It's been a while since I read it, but like, <laughs> based off my rusty memory, there's this horny kid. Uh, who's jacking off and out of the TV oh. two demons come out of the TV and they're just like hey we're going to have sex with your family and everything fuck you and he's like no don't have sex with my family but then they're like okay listen we'll give you some magic powers if you just fuck off and he's like oh cool so what <laughs> just... oh you're giving me magic powers so you can go rape my family I don't care yeah pretty, pretty much <laughs> um, so they give him like this power that allows him to like make anyone horny for him if he points at them but the way they do that is she turns the main character's finger into like essentially like a dick wand and so whoever he points that to will just have like raising like raging sexual desires for the main character Mm. um but of course it goes horribly wrong and he's like pointing it at like old ladies and all kinds of stuff and he you know monkey paw situation 
But like the way that Dick Fingers is drawn, like na- now every time Gona Guy draws like a pointing finger, like it's the Dick Finger pose. <laughs> <laughs> Every time we point, it's, it's only like the way going... it's drawn because like golden guy's fingers are like kind of like lumpy circles interconnected. <laughs> At least in like in the, the older style. So whenever I'm reading Devil Man, like Akira's like pointing, I'm like, oh, it's the dick finger. <laughs> oh my god, that is so weird. Okay, Jeez. I did a whole video on it way back in the day. Probably didn't censor much, but that was back when I'm like, I was a rebel. <laughs> I showed you the titties. You didn't put like I don't know a Falcon Punch sticker or something. I, I, I think I did on some. I was I, I would either put a Falcon Punch sticker or I'll put it like a uh, uh, like a black circle. Um, ah, okay. <laughs> so then I think there's times where I'm like, oh fuck it. And if I was talking about something that was like, uh, like animated or live action, I'm like, oh, I guess we're just seeing titties today, guys. <laughs> you guys are old enough. <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> when I was making oh yeah, you were, tech- were you making them in high school? Yeah, I was like, oh, I was probably okay. 16 when I started. Oh, I thought you started in like first year of uni. No, no. Oh, That's okay. was a little bit more refined. <laughs> but then uni is also like the nail in the coffin for my channel. Oh, why? Well, see, first year I was fine. Because like, you know, first year... I would go to my classes and just go home. But then second year, that's when I started building more friend groups and hanging out with friends and staying out late. Uh, so I just didn't have that much time for like video work mm. on top of, you know, actual, you know, studying and everything. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So that kind of took over. And then that that's kind of when the big gaps in between videos started. Ah, I see. Okay. Jeez, how did we get here? I, I don't know where we started, and now we're here. <laughs> we, see, that's the beauty of like these uh, these podcasts. <laughs> Even though I want to get to the main topic of what I wanted this podcast to be. Oh yeah, he wanted this last time, but we somehow just kept on talking about Shonen Jump, and that's what it became. <laughs> yes, so I want to talk about aliens, and then maybe if time allows, some cryptids, because I'm all about <laughs> that shit. Yeah. Oh, when he first told me this, I was like, "You mean like xenomorphs, like uh, James Cameron?" He's like, "No, no, 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 real aliens, man." Actual like, aliens. <laughs> okay, so like, I think I've talked about this in the past, either to you or on the channel. Mm-hmm. But when I was a kid, despite me being a scaredy little bitch boy, <laughs> I loved me some monsters and cryptids, and I believed in all that shit. Oh my god, El Chupacabra and Bigfoot are real. <laughs> Oh my god! <laughs> I used to watch all those, and like as we talked in a previous podcast, you know, Animal Planet and Discovery Channel fucking lied to me. Yeah, lo- so I thought to, I was yeah. validated. Yeah. <laughs> so I used to go like I, I, there was these websites that I don't even think are up anymore. I think it was called like Monstrum or something, or the Cryptopedia or something like that. And like they would have all these cryptids and monsters on the book fairs. Always got like monster books and mythology books. I loved learning and exploring all that stuff um always have always will sort Mm -hmm. of but um see nowadays i'm like okay cryptids are clearly for the most part not real some of them some cryptids have been proven to be real for the which ones i think you know like giant octopus like kraken like at one point in time were thought to be like no there's no way a squid could get that big yeah but then like yeah it turns out it can like yeah yeah. certain things were just like people back then just didn't know what the fuck they were looking at and made up stories and since like like have you ever looked at an old drawing of like a lion like medieval times like it's not a lion really that's some other creature like have you ever look at a medieval bestiary Mm -hmm. of like when you know people from like you know ancient times would go out to like africa and like look at all the animals they'll like draw it down real quick or like pass it on by by mouth and it'll turn out to be something completely different Mm. like like lions just look like weird dragon creatures (laughs) or like elephants like had like castles on their back which is weird because i can't like my modern brain because i know exactly what they look like can't like uh 
imagine that you're not interested yeah, exactly okay. but yeah. so like you know certain sea monsters were just like deep sea animals that like floated up to the ocean mm. you know so like the oar fish you know that really really long blue deep sea fish with like the pink like fins and everything back then people probably thought that was like a sea serpent or something so like in a sense <laughs> like I, there is value to cryptozoology but yeah like bigfoot <laughs> like if he was real we would have found him by now yeah yeah that's that's the one that still gets perpetuated like no he's real <laughs> yeah like yeah. it's like no like unless bigfoot is like the like the greatest hum- like spy ever <laughs> there, there, there yeah. ain't no way we haven't found like a big and it's, the weird thing is every culture has like their own bigfoot uh, actually one of them has a little foot really yeah, there is a little foot <laughs> I I know people connect it to the Yeti that like that's the snow version of Bigfoot, yeah. but like that's then, the only like, one. Then like Australia in. has their own version. In America, there's different versions of Bigfoot. You have like you know the standard Sasquatch Bigfoot. In Florida, you got the skunk ape, which is no, like that's a, a really that, that's smelly. A, that's Bigfoot. a thing. I, I never heard of the skunk ape in my life until now. Yeah, the skunk ape is. A... How have you not watched not watch X Files? It still baffles me to this day. How you... it baffles me too. <laughs> but see, I'm I'm not a normie. <laughs> <laughs> but like that show is like perfect. I, for I me. know. I probably I probably should. I I, I yeah. don't want to. Um, yeah, it's like it's like like they have episodes on like Bigfoot, and I'm pretty it's sure not skunk animated ape. hums. <laughs> oh my! You like practical effects? I'm pretty sure they do that. I'm not you sure. Know, I big seen... city woman. Okay. <laughs> Anyways, maybe there is. I don't know. I haven't seen it. My parents actually used to watch it. Um, mm. But see, back then I was too scared. <laughs> uh. Uh, so anyways, I think that I really want to talk more about aliens. So like, mm-hmm. aliens, I still think, are a possibility. Um, to an extent. Maybe not to the point where it was like, yeah. They're like, no, yeah. I believe in aliens. They're definitely out there. But as far as aliens on Earth, eh, no. Nah. To me, it's like hit and miss. Maybe, maybe not. But like, mm. see, I live in Vegas, and Vegas is close to Area 51. So apparently we get a lot of UFO activity around here. Just like, I think, as of the recording of this podcast, like two days ago, there's this Vegas family that claims to have seen a UFO in two large alien beings ranging from 8 to 10 feet with very large eyes and mouths. Okay. Uh, and then apparently my family, hey, wait. my mom seen a UFO, and then when I went what? to Iran one time, yeah, my mom, when she was younger, living in California, she was went to the gym. And it wasn't just her. It was like a bunch of other people. Uh, she was in Van Nuys, and she was coming out of the gym. I think if you look up like Van Nuys UFO, you might even see the story. But she came out. She saw what like a UFO in the sky that was just hovering there. It looked like two plates that were just kind of like hovering right next to each other, with, like light in the middle, like the standard UFO hmm. uh, kind of. And it was just floating there, and then it just disappeared. And she was outside in the gym parking lot with a bunch of other people, and a bunch of other people saw it. Um. Then, when I think it was like my second or third trip to Iran when I was living in Dubai, we were kind of like by the Russian border. And then we didn't notice it at first, but as we're flipping through pictures that we're taking of like the like the road and everything, um, there's like this weird like cigarette shaped thing floating in the sky. What is that? Uh, so we think we assume it's a UFO. I mean that's probably like a Russian plane or whatever something. Probably like. that's you know that's what that's what the man is trying. To do. <laughs> that's what they want you to think. That's what they want you to think, Hamza. <laughs> uh, so uh, the first story, uh, one with the eight foot tall. What is there a video or like just there? I was looking it up right before we started this podcast. Of course, yeah. it's just like a bunch of people. Because like, when it comes to the alien things, the only thing that always bothers me, it's always like the most grainy thing, or it's like the family said they saw something, but they didn't. Like, they don't have okay. video evidence. See, that's what bothers me. Like in this day and age, with the camera quality we have on just regular phones, why is everything blurry or like the worst quality? Or like that's what like I'm like we can't, you can't get a clear picture like of anything. Uh, like that's what like gets me like suspicious. Yeah, that's that, that's that's always been 
my main problem with all that. It's like <laughs> in this day, like I could get it from like the early two thousands, but like now, like why, why, why are we still working with like rainy stuff? But then I remember <laughs> like a couple years ago, the military was actually talking about it. And like, we don't know what this is. And I'm like, what do you mean? You don't know what this is. And then like, apparently they were supposed to talk about it. And then they just never did. And we're just like left living out here. We're like, oh, okay, so we're just not going to talk about it. Uh, I I remember that too. I think vaguely that like they admitted that something was a UFO, but they they just admitted it's a UFO, and they like they don't know what it is, and they'll like figure it out. But we never got an answer. Um, yeah, but like still, like I don't know. It, to me, it's like I don't think. Like, even your mom's story about the UFO in the sky, I believe that, I don't know, it's some sort of just regular plane, and maybe, I don't know, maybe some, like, her eyes were playing tricks on her or something, or, like, they didn't see it properly, or something was blocking her, the weather, or something. I don't know. I'm the skeptic here, so that's why I'm coming up with all these things, but, like, I believe aliens are definitely out there, but, like, it hasn't happened yet on Earth. See, I've never seen anything myself, so I it, it's hard for me. Like I'm willing to accept certain people when they say they've seen things, but um, obviously I've never had a well, I've had a supernatural experience once, but maybe we should. Save oh, that right. for see, that's time. ghost. We're getting to ghosts now. Yeah, we'll save that for Halloween. We'll get out of the ghosts. <laughs> maybe we'll have the whole trilogy. We'll have like aliens, ghosts, and like uh, I guess cryptids. But we're also kind of talking about cryptids here too. So. Yeah, but like, but cryptids aren't they like? There's speculation, right? Like, this is what... Uh... See, it's like the whole basis of cryptozoology is trying to, like, find animals that are, like, not yet classified. Mm. Like, properly classified. Because, like, there's certain animals, like, that I guess you could kind of define as a cryptid a bit, like, for a bit, until they're, they're fully scientifically classified. Like, you know, certain <laughs> animals kind of, like, will have a mutation and kind of turn into a different animal. Like, sometimes that happens in the wild due to, like, climate change or whatever, or environmental change. They have to, like, kind of evolve and adapt. I mean, still mm-hmm. to this day, randomly, they'll be like, oh, we found a new species of bird. Like, we're just... Yeah, birds evolve species. very quickly and make some, a lot of subspecies, I've heard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. like yeah. birds... I think there was, like, a new species of monkey at one point. Oh, like, really? A few years oh. ago, there's like, a new species of monkey. It's like, mm. oh, okay, we just can have straight up a new species of monkey. Mm. Uh, so anyways, th- there's certain things here and there that I agree, but there's all sorts of wild cryptids, and some of them kind of bleed into aliens. Like, there's the Flatwoods Monster, which is an, an alien to some people, and then the Hopsville Goblins. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that, that's the official name? <laughs> yeah, so... The Hobbesville Goblin, I'm surprised this never became a movie. This is like such like an 80s, 90s cheese movie. I'm surprised it never fucking happened. But apparently, I think it was in Kentucky. Uh, there's this family that kind of lives out in the woods. And they, they see a bright light come down from the sky. Mm-hmm. And then like these glowing goblin-like beings kind of like float out and obviously one of the guys gets really fucking scared shoots one of them in the chest but like it falls over and then gets back up and apparently one of them scratched uh like like i think one of the daughters or sons in the family like across the face and they were kind of like hiding in their house for like a bit and then eventually the police came and of course they completely gone where the guy shot the goblin like they saw like an indent on the ground but like no blood or anything to really identify anything um i think usually when it comes to these paranormal things in that part of america it's like oh it was a gas leak and maybe an owl because like usually everyone goes for like an owl because like the way owl's eyes kind of reflect against light Mm, yeah yeah Mm -hmm. um it's like oh yeah this is probably like some kind of monster because i love owls but like if i were to see an owl at like the dead of night i'd fucking shit my pants Um, (laughs) but owls are awesome um (laughs) birds in general are awesome you know bird up everyone anyways um i see what this podcast is for it's for your bird propaganda (laughs) dude listen everyone's like oh the monkeys are going to take over when humans are gone but like the way crows have been going the crows might you know step up um what's happening with crows 
Dude, crows are fucking sick. Like, I'm not sure if you know, like, how smart crows are. Like, they're, <laughs> like, hyper-intelligent. I, I'm, it, maybe... I, after talking with you, I'm starting to realize, maybe I don't, I'm not following enough animal shit in my life, I guess. <laughs> you really should. Uh, it's really interesting. But no, like, crows, I mean, like, they know how to use simple tools. They can talk. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, like. Cause what I, do you mean they can talk? Crows can talk. Like like a parrot, like in they yeah, can just yeah, 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 they, they, Okay, all right. I thought like full on like they can be like, hey baby, how are you? <laughs> <laughs> well see, eventually they'll evolve into that. <laughs> see, monkeys don't have vocal cords. No, they do. Pro- they scream as as Yeah, loud. but they can't they can't form words. Hey, they can't form words. Yeah, we, we've they, tried they, teaching them, but they don't have the vocal cords to make They can words. use sign language though. They Yeah, really, but like Yeah. Birds can actually talk. Yeah, yeah. I mean actually wait, to be fair, the pl- Hey, in Planet of the Apes, they can talk. So, I mean, you know, yeah, check that. it out. See, that's, that's not scientifically <laughs> accurate. I'm waiting for Planet of the Birds. <laughs> there are birds movies. like, like Exactly, of... but there's like a horror movie. I, like, yeah. I want like a hyper-intelligent bird being. <laughs> Sonic had one. Exactly. See, and they'll protect me because like I, I'm kind to birds and I like them. So <laughs> I'll be the accepted human. Well, I, I take care of their predators, cats, so they will exactly. hate me. Exactly, so you're kind of like, hmm, I don't know what to do about this guy. <laughs> Maybe if he takes enough cats. But anyways, yeah, so, yeah. Um, you know, crows, like they can use tools and everything. They're really smart about getting things, and they've kind of have tamed wolves. So they've been studying, like, recently, like, crows have gone to, like, you know, wolf packs and everything, and they'll kind of, like, form this relationship where, like, you know, they'll play with their young, watch over the young, and kind of, like, alert wolves when, like, nearby, like, food or dangers around, and then, you know, they'll get a treat. And at first, they thought it was a symbiotic relationship, but, like, over time, the more they research it, like, no, the crows are benefiting from this way more than the wolves are, and they kind of look like they've tamed wolves. Like, the, the wolves just listen to whatever the crow would say. So... Yeah, dude. So oh. And apparently, like, some scientists have said they're kind of in their early Stone Age. But, like, chimpanzees have also been in their Stone Age, too. Hmm. Also, if we're looking at bird overlords versus monkey overlords, I'd rather have birds. Because, like, some monkeys are fucking terrifying. Yeah, that is dope. that is 100% true. Because like, it's just a dude with, like, no limits when it comes to rage. Like, if a monkey just wants to rip you apart, it will rip you apart. Yeah, I know, no, that's funny. Especially chimpanzee. Like, chimpanzees are fucking scary. They're basically like just like walking Chewbacca's, basically, at the, this, yeah. Yeah. In a way. Just, yeah, yeah. Like, maybe like orangutans, because orangutans are generally more chilled, despite them being very capable of just like probably ripping your head off, like, without mm-hmm. a problem. I saw a documentary where this like lady was like following gorillas and. One of them just straight up stampeded her, like, like, like pushed her over, like he didn't go full force, because like they speculated, like, oh, one of the other gorillas was like, either asserting dominance or checking strength, or like testing, or straight up one of them said like, oh, maybe just a dare from the other gorillas. <laughs> yeah, and like literally it was like scary. I'm like, holy shit, that would be that's terrifying. <laughs> yeah, it's it's fucking great. I, I like how we're talking about aliens. Actually, I know how I could relate this to aliens. All right, okay. Real quick. All this right. is birds wanted... are aliens confirmed. No, okay, no, l- l- listen up, listen up, because this is okay. where shit's gonna get fucking wild. I was not aware of this concept until like two weeks ago when I originally wanted to talk about this. Okay. So I was curious. I was on the internet one day. I was a bit curious. I was stroking my non-existent beard. I'm like, hmm, let me see here. When it comes to aliens, generally, the alien consensus, it's like, you know, you got the reptilians. You got the greys. There's a consensus? Well, for the most part, we look at, like, popular alien species. The only one I know is little green men. Uh, Which or apparently little... that's not accurate. They're grey men now. Oh, grey men, my bad. Yeah, yeah. that was the... Yeah, yeah. 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 So, like, yeah. you got the greys. You got the reptoids or draconians or whatever. They... From what I've researched, they've gone under many names. Mm. And then you got the Nordics. What? Which what? Are... The Nordics are apparently, like, they look very similar to us, but they're, like, taller and more beautiful and pale they're basically like these tall beautiful bino looking aliens that like are friendly and just want to see how we do it is that where ridley scott got his idea for the engineers in prometheus 
I have not seen Prometheus, so I don't. But know. like that ha- also has like these large, uh, like. But do they look human? Like European they look human humans? in the sense that like they're like you know they they have like a human body that which are like fully jacked, but they have oh, okay. black eyes and they're bald, but they're like whitish, gray. To an extent, from my understanding, Nordics look like just really beautiful European people, but very pale with like beautiful blue eyes. But they're physically stronger and, and, and mentally smarter than us. But we haven't seen that. Like, I don't know. That, that's weird. That I don't know. Okay. Kind of racist as well. Like, oh, these European people are the best. Uh, kind of well, <laughs> I, I've secretly heard. Like, I, I've... I went to some wild fucking like thread of where one of them is like, "This is why white people are taking over. It's because of the Nordics." I'm like, "Whoa, there, buddy!" <laughs> <laughs> like, whoa, whoa. <laughs> so, so plan of the Nordics. I'm like, oh, my God. So is Thor real according to them? See, they're probably more in line with the Ultimate Thor. It's like, yeah. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Milnir is an alien piece of technology. Um, anyways, um, so there's that. So I'm like, why do we only have these three aliens? I feel like, because with cryptids, we have so many. Like, almost every country has so many different fucking cryptids. Like, in America alone, there's like, you know, you've got the, like, the Pudgy Wudgy or whatever it's called. Pudgy Wudgy? It's like some. Uh, I thought you were going to say like Mothman or something. Like... Hey, there's Mothman. <laughs> or I think, was it Pudgy Wudgy? Was it Pookie Wookie? Or is it, sorry. <laughs> You're just picking up like baby words now. <laughs> it's like based off some like Native American um, mythology, but it's like some porcupine man. Mm-hmm. Um, then you got like the frog man, the goat man, um, the, 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 the. There's a whole bunch in, mm-hmm. in America. Um, so I'm just like, there has to be like more aliens, people proclaimed are real so i start looking it up i'm like types of aliens on youtube and then i come across this thing called star seeds hamza my dude okay i do not know how this concept has not made it into like comics or manga or something Mm -hmm. so apparently star seeds are like these people who claim to be either descendants or like the mental reawakenings of aliens from far off planets or other dimensions. And these are legit people that believe this. They're like, Oh, I am a, a from Andromeda. Oh, I'm a blue avian. And we're like a peaceful race from like the eighth dimension. And we will one day bring peace upon the world. But hum- humans are not ready yet. And there's like, I'm trying to research more into this. I'm like, okay, how many star seas are there? What is this? Some of these people think they're God who have reincarnated themselves into a human form. Um, this sounds like a bunch of crazy people who are high. Dude, I sw- there's a whole Reddit page of this. <laughs> so it must be true. Right? <laughs> no, no. Dude, I swear, if you go on r slash star seed, and I feel bad because like maybe these... I mean, it's fucking weird. And like obviously these people, there's something not right. I yeah. also don't want to bully these people. Yeah, no, don't bully them, but like... Uh, but like I, 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 <laughs> there's just one post on there. It's like, just because you're a higher being doesn't mean you have to be mean to those who are not. And it was like a large thread about that. It's like, can an Andromedan get along with a blue avian? And it's like, oh my god. Shit. Oh my god. It's like there's a legit YouTube channels about it, and it like, ties a lot into like astral projecting and psychics, like psychics and all that. I'm like, why haven't we seen a psychic story where they communicate with aliens and there's like alien resurrections in human bodies and like all that? Like this is so ripe. For, like, I'm so pretty specific. sure we have. We just like we're not aware of it. You and me. I'm pretty Probably. sure there's something. But I want like a mainstream shonen like this. <laughs> So you want the blue avians to have like a battle with the whatever? What's the other one called? Uh, I don't there, know. There's so many. I, let me <laughs> let me type in like types of star star seeds. <sighs> star seeds. Apologize. So they're they're alien. They're people who believe that they're reincarnated aliens from uh, other worlds. Nineteen types of star seeds. Oh, they're nineteen. My God. So okay. You got the 
Palladium mm. come from a, a star cluster. They're typically tall, slim, long limbed, with blonde hair. And blue. What is up with these like really <laughs> white aliens? <laughs> They exude divine feminine energy. I was about to say, like, um, like maybe all the aliens are just like, uh, you know, uh, Aryan Nazis. But then you mentioned feminine energy. I'm like, oh no, okay. okay. So then there's the, the Syrian, <laughs> who come from planet Sirius. They have lion-like appearances, but are attracted to canines. That just sounds like a guy who's trying to insert his furry yeah. uh, okay. <laughs> fan there's fiction. There's the to... Acturians who have darker complexion and low body temperature and blood pressure. Okay. And they're <laughs> put on this planet to do spiritual healing and, and humble humans. Why did the... My question is why? Like, why would the aliens, like, do this? For I what reason? Then there's the Andromedans, who are typically oval-shaped in the face with a thin build. Their mission is to bring peace and love to all races enslaved by the reptilians. Who again? Who started this? Is this like who? Because okay, apparently, an, an alien lore that I've, I've I've gathered over the years, the reptilians are like fucking assholes. They're like. <laughs> <laughs> They're just evil. I, mean, I know, being... I know the, I know the joke that like, oh, uh, the governments are run by lizard people. Like I've heard that a million times. Yeah. yeah. So, but like, but like, okay, where did the, who started this? The star seed thing. That I don't and see. Every time you look it up, it's always like those people that believe in crystal healing and all, all that stuff, or like hand reading. It's always those people. So it's like <laughs> astral projection shit. <sighs> I is I'm surprised because like you know there are YouTube channels that like oh let's go into Strange fight aliens. I'm sure he has. This, I mean this, there is this a... feels like some Doctor Strange. Strange which is a look typical nerd. <laughs> Put this shit with Doctor. That's my first thought. Just... Um... No, but like, okay. <sighs> all right, fine. I was I was about to. All right. Uh, this is like weird. Okay, so. Oh yeah, so that's my like question. Like, why? What's the purpose of it? Like, why don't? You, why not come by themselves in like a spaceship? Why do this reincarnation bullshit? Let me see. What, what's this here? Star seeds have experienced other lives in other galaxies, so they've come equipped with spiritual guidance that can help humans realize their true intentions and purposes to attain enlightenment. Mm, okay. Okay, so here are the avians. They come from a dimensional realm of energetic fluidity and physical detachment. They have bird-like qualities, and their mission is to guide humans through. Oh, so this, so this is your favorite because the bird-like quality. <laughs> Let me see. So, avians are typically optimistic beings who have unlimited faith in the spiritual potential of all human and living things. They serve as spirit guides to humans, ready to attain enlightenment. See, a lot of them. For the most part, just seem like tall, thin, beautiful white people, mm -hmm. or they're animals and mostly cats. Oh, cat! Really? Okay. There, there, there was the serious ones. Then there's the felines, and then there's the lyrens. So far as I'm gathering, as I'm like scrolling through, then we have actual Martians on here. <laughs> is Martian Manhunter in there or no? Let me see. What What is a Martian? So the features unknown. Mission. To connect with and advance the human race. Martians are cloaked in mystery. Of course, the one that's closest to our planet is the one that's like in mystery. Yeah, but Martian to be fair, Martian Manhunter can shapeshift. So maybe that's why? Oh, maybe the creator of Martian Manhunter was actually a Martian. He was <laughs> uh, Okay. Uh, this is... Wait, so the subreddit that you found... Yep. It's people who genuinely believe they are this. Yes, there, there are people that like almost like the ways I've seen some of them write on Reddit. It's like they're coming out. It's like, oh my gosh, today I realized I'm a draconian and like. But isn't that the bad guy? Okay, so there's draconians and then there's the reptilians. Okay. So the draconians want to unite everyone. The reptilians seek to keep humans in the dark about spiritual enlightenment. And then there's also Saurians. So I, there's like three different lizard 
aliens. <laughs> aliens aren't really like as imaginative as I thought. You know, they're not like a dude with like five thousand eyes and like stuff yeah. yeah like okay so see that's the other thing that makes me feel like this is fake we're attributing earth-like things exactly to like yeah these like like why are they reptilian at all like why like why are there like cat at all like because we have cats and lizards on earth but like who says they're even like who says they even like walk on two legs see like, that's my biggest thing too because i also you know going off to another thing i like speculative zoology yeah, uh, a lot of them have special like speculated what actual alien life would look like, and a lot of them saying it's very ignorant of humans to think all aliens are going to be walking on two legs and use hands. Yeah, that's my point. Like, because it, it's not it's not the ideal body shape. It's it, it's ideal for humans, but that doesn't mean it's like the best method of having a body. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, I I don't I don't understand uh, that at all. So like that's why it's like this seems like. Yeah, it just seems like a fascinating imagination, but like crazy talk. I'm just worried. Is this going to start like a different Scientology cult out of this? <laughs> I'm surprised it has. Does Scientology <laughs> also believe in some kind of space god? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's why I mentioned it specifically. Maybe this is a spinoff of that. Or maybe the... Because, the, the, <laughs> you know, the reptilians want to like keep humans away from spiritual enlightenment. So maybe, you know, the, 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 the founder of the Scientology is secretly reptilian. <laughs> Maybe I'm a blue avian and you're a, a feline. Okay, all right, sure, sure. Why not? Uh, go ahead. Yes. <laughs> it's just like I don't know why this hasn't become like a like a larger pop culture. There's yeah, like I'm scrolling through. There's another species called the Agarthians, which are basically space elves that are like just want to protect nature. I'm sure, I forget a feeling Star Trek has touched on something like this at some point. Or probably this is all inspired by Star Trek, pretty much. I've oh, yeah, maybe that, that that could be true. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, there's comments on here. <laughs> okay, I mean, this one's pretty recent. All right, I'm not going to say the what website I'm on, but like this one was like from April mm-hmm. of this year. Mm-hmm. I am a star seed, yet I don't know where I'm, I come from. I felt out of place with my family and friends as well as other people. I've always felt abandoned. I had a very rough upbringing, but still feel blessed and go through all that while growing up. It has really shaped who I am. I am truly grateful for my earthly experiences that said, though, I always, that being said, though, I always, and I mean, absolutely always have wanted to go home, but I have yet to find home. It just sounds like somebody who's left out, like who feels left out by yeah, people. Yeah, I feel uh, like this is a very easy way for people that like. I'm trying to get to one of the weirder ones. Because I, I felt like that, and I, I thought like I was an alien amongst like my family or my peers and stuff. So, see, the- like I, I, I get that feeling. You know, I am a an American born Muslim guy who's half Mexican, half Iranian. Most Americans don't really want to consider me being American. Most Mexicans. Don't want to consider me me being Mexican, and mm-hmm. most Iranians don't want to consider me being Iranian. So, like, I'm kind of just a human being. Why? Why not? Why don't? Because Americans, it's like you can be from anywhere, but like you can still be. Well, see, like when I say most Americans, not maybe most Americans. There's probably like twenty percent that don't mm-hmm. want me to be a, an American because of my mm-hmm. upbringing. Ah, okay. Yeah, but like that just sounds like someone who just like feels left out and is like latching on to this as an explanation. But like, just needs like therapy and friends, honestly. <laughs> yeah, like <sighs> a lot of this kind of like I'm scrolling through these comments. These people are in their late thirties. A lot of them are saying, "I'm like, okay, this is a little, a little <laughs> late to be like looking up the scars and attaching sh- crystals to your head for <laughs> spiritual healing." I also don't know why all this alien stuff. It's like all oh, spiritual psychic like where's like the alien dog and it's probably pop culture ruining our lives yeah maybe okay. yeah yeah uh-huh. you guys building fucking spaceships and going <laughs> <laughs> i mean because we assume that technology has to play a big role at least that's what science fiction says yeah. so like because like, in a sense like i think i forgot was it mars we have found alien life, but it was like a bacteria. On, yeah, it was a like, small planet. bacteria. Yeah, I remember That's that. That's actually yeah. alien. It is something not from Earth. Yeah, yeah. So well, like but again, that... it's it's taking a form that 
it's not a big thing like a human or a creature. It's just a spe- speck of germ, essentially. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I definitely believe there's a planet out there. Maybe that is like early signs of life. Maybe they got little weird creatures scuttling about. You know, they're, they're mm. probably in like their prehistoric age. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I, don't, I mean, I, I fully, I mean, uh, f- fuck that. I fully believe there's an alien a planet out there where like fully formed aliens, but like we've, they're, I, we haven't had contact with them or they haven't had contact with them for whatever reason. Too far, don't have the technology or the ways to do it or whatever. Like, I fully be- I believe in aliens. I just don't believe that Earth has anything to do with it so far. Yeah, see, like, I don't know. I, I feel like there still is a, a, a possibility, but then there's a lot of it, like people going too far or just simply humans not believing humans can do certain things because you know there's a lot of people it's like oh ancient aliens and the aliens made like uh the... oh, yeah, that was just full-on racist like... yeah pyramids and everything like that and yeah that other. it's like no like you, we gotta believe in human engineering yeah like it's like oh, how do these ancient people build the pyramids uh because they had the skills and knowledge to do it like yeah. it's like... and the slaves don't forget the... yeah, they, they had the slaves. <laughs> you know i don't go looking at like you know birch leaf i'm like that has to be an alien. That's a giant antenna coming around. <laughs> <laughs> Calling out to my alien brothers. Yeah. Steel. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, wait, is that Tom Cruise? Oh, he must be an alien. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, that's a timely reference because Mission Impossible is coming out. So. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. That's true. Gotta, gotta go see that movie. Yeah, yeah. I need to rewatch all the others before. Uh... I started with four. No, that yeah, okay, the Ghost Protocol, yeah, right, right. Was that the one he, he went into? Yeah, he, he went to Burj Khalifa, yeah, yeah. Okay, so yeah, that, that's where I started. <laughs> I think it was called Burj Dubai at the time, maybe. That's true. Yeah, <laughs> we were there for that change in history. <laughs> <laughs> I remember people were rejecting it, like, "What? No, we call it Burj Dubai for so long." But then I don't know why we just like accepted it. Yeah, probably would have been easier because like, every time I talk about like. And I came from Dubai here. Like, yeah, the Burj Khalifa. Khalifa is the character from Dragon Ball. Maybe this is. Oh my! I hate myself for having this thought. Maybe the Star Seed can be used as the as the premise for the next Super Sentai. Fuck it, why not? I don't think we've ever had like an alien set. We've no, had, I think like, they did it. In, no, 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 they they did it for I think maybe Q Ranger. Because they're oh, so yeah, cool. yeah me, that's always so it's already been done. Never mind, Super Sentai's done everything. No, they, 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 no, they can still do it. See, these are Star Seed. These are aliens being reborn as humans. So uh, Star Seed Sentai uh, Alien Ranger, whatever. Star Seed Sentai, you know, Gala Ranger or something. Oh, yeah, Galaxy, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. Gallo Ranger, yeah. <laughs> there we go. Free idea, Toei. Feel yeah. free to take it. <laughs> uh, no, 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 not free, Toei. I want uh, uh, residuals. What the fuck? <laughs> Give me some residuals. Make sure it has a sexy evil general. Uh, <laughs> Don't give it for free. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Hey, here, my, I, I want money. I want the sexy general. And have a really good first episode. So I know it's a good season. <laughs> And don't make a weird V cinema. Yeah. To, oh, is our Sentai V cinemas that? Oh, you yeah, know, you told me. That yeah, I just told you. We're yeah, working yeah. harvesting Yakuza. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Like, no, I don't want the Red Ranger to live in this world. He's too precious. <laughs> oh. My, oh. My God. Okay. Yeah, see, we connected back to Toku. Now we're hitting everything. Yeah. See, like, that's, that's the classic. You know, we, we could talk about, like, the furthest thing away from our normal topics, and we'll eventually loop it back. I mean, because like it's very, e- it's very easily. I can easily make like you can easily make a Game of Thrones show out of this. Like all these alien races uh, having like, their own like agendas and like political, like what not political, but like galactical. I guess <laughs> would be the correct term. Galactical, political, like uh, whatever, like uh, you know, like goals and agendas, and they all like come in conflict to with each other, and there's like you know scheming and stuff. So like, yeah, you could do that. Like, and yeah, the only thing of all this alien stuff is like, like humans always want to put themselves as the main characters. I'm like pretty sure if these are 
super superior high level intellect beings of capable of so much spiritual enlightenment i'm like okay we need one for earth we don't need like 15 different races <laughs> for us. also like if they're so super advanced humanity is so far behind what the fuck do they want to do with us anyway guide us in the right direction so we could be why guide us? Why? Why? Why do you care? I don't. That's the <laughs> We're fucking attractive. Like, like, because <laughs> like, like Superman was raised here, so I can understand him. But like, you don't have any connection. Like, what the? Why do you care? <laughs> Who do you think implanted Superman? Oh my god! <laughs> it's all a test. <laughs> yeah, Shane's coming up with conspiracy theories now. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's a cons- didn't Superman kind of do that All Star Superman? What 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 did he do? I don't. And because like the whole premise of All Star Superman is like you know he's dying and he's like really worried if Earth can survive without Superman. So like mm-hmm. I think towards the end he like gets into like one of the like the you know many devices that could just do whatever in the, mm-hmm. the Fortress of Solitude, and I <laughs> think he makes like an Earth. Oh, and, yeah, to test it out, right? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. And yeah. then, like, towards the end of, like, that storyline, you just see, like, um, I forgot the names of the creators of Superman. Um, oh, Jerry Siegel the, and Joe Shuster. Yeah. Yeah, you see them make Superman. And then, like, Superman looks at it from his, like, device, and he's like, yeah, they'll be all right. <laughs> like, no, Superman 2020, please. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mm. Ugh. Jeez. Okay. Mm. Yeah. So <laughs> aliens, man, they're fucking wild. I I could talk all day about this because like, it, I I just I like how crazy, especially seeing all this and then like as a kid, yeah, bam, 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 it's just fucking aliens. <laughs> <laughs> you got like these wild dog aliens. You got stinky bug aliens. You got like Ultraman alien. Oh yeah, I was uh, way big. That's his name. Right? Yeah, yeah, way big. And yeah, Alien X, which is like God. Uh, True. Yeah, Alien X. Which is see, God. the thing yeah. is, I kind of watch want to watch some of the later like Omniverse and everything because apparently he could fuse aliens together. And then the reboot, the shitty reboot that no one likes uh, of Ben Ten. Oh, the one where it's like Super Kitty. Yeah. The yeah. thing with that one that really upsets me, it has a concept I would have fucking loved as a kid, mm-hmm. where he also gets a power where he could have the aliens like super armor up and like enhance their abilities and so you got like heat blast and like some super cool dope armor and everything i'm like why couldn't this be in the good looking show <laughs> uh, i'm still surprised it's going so far yeah like, I, think I just... that stopped I, I think we're kind of done with ben 10 for now but i just feel sad that like because I know Rebel Taxi talked about it that like there was like a boom in the early two thousands of like action oriented cartoons, which we've kind of gotten away from. I want that back. When are we gonna get that? And like Rebel Taxi See, believe I, this. I don't like, know why like American kids are not like Japanese kids and just buy all the toys for action shows, man. Like what the fuck? Well, I thought they did. Don't they? Don't do don't they? American kids apparently not, because that's why all these action cartoons get cancelled. Huh. Okay. Because apparently the reason why Young Justice didn't like got yeah that I know was toy sales. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's what happened to some Ben Tens. Like, oh, the toy sales stopped, so we're canceled. Hmm. Meanwhile, Common Rider and Super Sentai has been going ongoing for like forty-seven, forty-six years nonstop because everyone's buying the toys. Yeah. Yeah, that is interesting. Maybe it's okay. Maybe they should stop making toys and make video games instead. Maybe make some phone apps. Yeah, make some phone apps or video. Yeah, maybe that's where it needs to go. Ten filter on my TikTok. Is I would really like to talk to a because we're not. I'm so far disconnected from like what the toys do because I'm not interested in that. I get it plays a role in the show, but like I don't care. Like yeah, see, toy... as a kid, I just got toys whatever for whatever I got. Like just because I saw a show doesn't mean I was actively seeking out the toys. Like sometimes I'll just get a toy because it looked cool. Mm, yeah, I that's was never true. like the type. Of, like, I don't think like I love Ben Ten. I never bought a Ben Ten toy. Well, oh, probably no. yeah. oh, for me it's a bit different. Like, yeah, I would buy toys just because it looked cool. But there were times where like 
if I knew the show, I would want the toy for it. Like if I saw Ben 10, I'd be like, oh my God, that'd be really cool to get that toy. Or Star Wars Clone Wars. Um, uh, I would like, I get the toy. Actually, there was a, a Toys R Us did a promotion where like, if you bought toys up uh, uh, above a certain like level, they would give you tickets to the new Star Wars Clone Wars movie for free. So me and my dad went and we bought all of these Ben 10 toys because we just went to that aisle and I saw so many of them. I'm like, oh my God, I want this and this and this. And then my dad was doing it for the promotion. Then we got to like the cashier and we're like, okay, so we're going to get the tickets, right? He's like, oh, you have to buy Star Wars toys, not Ben 10 toys. I guess that makes sense. <laughs> I'm like, oh, no. And then I'm like, my, I was like devastated. I'm like, oh my, because like, when you buy a toy, you're like so excited. Like, oh my God, I want yeah, exactly. this out of the box. I want to play with it now. Uh, and then my, my dad saw who was out there. He's like, you know what, son? You can get the Ben 10 toys. I'll buy the tickets anyway. It's fine. That's... <laughs> and I'm like, yay. Because I was a dumb kid. I just like, I could have just, could have just gone, put all the stuff back, and then just picked up the Star Wars. Yeah, we already had your, your little kid heart set on the Ben 10 toys. Yeah, I you guess didn't, maybe. You, yeah. you didn't want the, the, the Stormtrooper. Or Yoda. But I would have been happy. Like, yeah, I, I was like, like, at the time, you're a kid. You, <laughs> yeah. you can't compromise. You're like, oh, I want this. I want it now. <laughs> yeah, probably. Yeah. So I, mean, I guess for me, because for me, it was mainly like Pokemon and Digimon. But like, I didn't have, I had like little figures of them, but I didn't have actual toys. Most of my toys were like comic book characters and then army men. I had a bunch. I had a lot of, I had cars. I had, uh, yeah, a lot of, yeah, a lot of action figures of very different sizes, which I like realized that as an, like, I, it, I I was like I was like it was because okay so I am watching Transform I'm reading Transformers and I'm watching Beast Wars right now. Oh yeah, uh, you are watching Beast Wars. Yeah, I'm actually watching. I'm like go back to it. It's still the CGI still bothers me, but I'm trying to look past it. Uh, <laughs> Maybe eventually over time you might get used to it. Be like their facial expressions are pretty good because they're very expressive, but like everything else is just. I mean. I try, I try to, like, it looks like very, like, PS1 era, like, at best. See, that's uh, the thing. I, I like PS1 graphics. Okay, I, then you I can still, watch. I still think Beast Wars kind of looks <laughs> 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 Yeah. Um, I mean, maybe I'll watch it one day, but I'm not uh, that interested in Transformers. Um, oh, really? I thought you'd like... I'm not, I, I don't, I, I'm not interested in G.I. Joe, which, like, they're hell-bent on putting together, so... See, like, I don't know, as a kid, it was really weird. I think most of my Transformers nostalgia is actually from the Bay movies. I did watch Transformers animated a bit, but wasn't, like, my favorite show ever. Um, I, I like Transformers Prime. I love that cartoon. I will probably watch the G1 OG cartoon someday because it's on Tubi. So I'm like, ah, why not? Actually, I didn't know this. Hasbro is putting all of their Power Ranger shows, all of their Transformers episodes on YouTube. It's available right now. You can watch it. Oh, really? All of Power Rangers, all of Transformers, like officially from Hasbro in like their official like channels like I, there's a hasbro pulse channel that's where you can find transformers and there's a power rangers official youtube channel where you can find like those uh and like i was surprised like uh, it's in north america i don't know if you're i don't know if you live in europe it's blocked or not but like in north america if you're there yeah you can watch it on youtube and you don't have to get a stream listeners or where they're from yeah comment so, below yeah. and let us know yeah, so like i was watching it and i'm like man I wish I had more Transformers toys as a kid because this seems like the... Because you basically get yeah, like two toys in one. You get a car or a dinosaur, depending on what, whichever one. And then you also get a robot at the same time. See, like, as a kid, for some reason, I just wasn't into robots at all. Which is I weird because you're like more into robots now than ever. <laughs> yeah, like now robots are cool. Like, yeah, everyone loves... Chicks dig giant robots. I dig giant robots. <laughs> but um, see, as a kid, I was like, dinosaurs, superheroes monsters preferably monsters from a collectum show <laughs> yeah so like because uh, i was like very just like curious because like this is the first time I ever googled toys for a show ever i've never kid before but i'm like with transformers the toys are kind of like a big deal and like they keep on coming up with different like there's so many different versions of optimus prime and megatron and stuff like that so i was just looking it up and i was like first of all i'm completely lost i don't know what i'm looking at like okay which version is this i have no idea yeah there's so many of those motherfuckers 
<laughs> yeah, but then I was like looking at like, oh my god, this has this size, this has that size, and I'm like, I had so many toys of varying sizes as a kid that like, how did I? Because that would annoy me as an adult. Like, oh no, it has to be the same size because like they can like be in the same universe. As a kid, I didn't give a fuck. Like, I would have a human who's like, I, I, I don't know, like, uh, I don't know how many, like, how much, like, ten times the size of like an alien. That's like, I don't know, something. Just, <laughs> yeah, I mean, as a kid, you just make it do like i remember i had this batman toy which i don't understand how it was it was like a big buff batman but he had like neon green pants oh okay neon green and like one of his hands just popped out and i can never pop it back in but you know, <laughs> as a kid i'm just like he has a cannon arm now <laughs> you made it work <laughs> and then he became my favorite toy I'm like holy shit he has a cannon arm so you basically turned Batman into Mega Man. Yes. <laughs> uh, I, I made a Mega Batman. Yeah, Mega Bat. <laughs> um, oh. Yeah. And like, yeah. see, my parents got a little bit lucky with me because eventually I got really into like clay, and oh, I, I would okay. kind of just. I think maybe that's why I kind of like Venom. Because like, what oh, I used really? To... This is you gonna ah, maybe, okay. maybe okay. So <laughs> here, here's this. Um, so like with some of my my army men toys, I because I I always lost the guns and like some of the guns for the army men toys were like really hard to put on and it would annoy me. So like, I would use the clay and kind of like make it form weapons, or then I'll just give them like monster arms or something or capes or whatever with the clay. <laughs> I'll make them do everything because like the clay you could just mold it. So I'm like, yeah, now he's like this and now he's like that, or like I'd wrap the clay all around one army guy and he basically, basically it was like. I didn't really connect the dots at the time. It was basically a symbiote for like, one <laughs> army man. He, he had a purple symbiote. Jeez. I, okay, maybe I used to play with threads a lot. Oh, my brother used to do that. Yeah, literally, like, like on my, like, we used to have a seamstress in our, uh, like, you would come and, like, you know, do certain, like, whatever, uh, stitches and stuff for my mom and, like, to her sisters and their dresses and stuff. So any leftover threads, I would, like, take it and I would tie it with other threads. And then, like, oh, this is a person now. <laughs> with a backstory and everything. Oh, they're snakes, uh, whatever. Uh, uh, yeah, and, like, I just play with them constantly. And my parents were, like, oh, like would laugh at me. They'd be like, we don't even need to buy you actual toys. Just, you can just, you can just give you a whole box of threads. You could play with them. I'm like, yeah, probably. <laughs> I mean, see, kid, kid, that's the pure thing about kids. They'll find a way. I mean, I remember as a kid when I was bored, and you know, this is before I had a DS and there wasn't like cell phones or anything like that. I'll look out the window and try to like turn everything I look at like into a monster. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, a tree kind of looks like a dinosaur if you look at it a certain way. And I'll pretend it was like a monster. Oh. Uh, which is like so weird now because like now I'm like I can't like give me a like my parents were jokingly they went to a mall and they saw like Toy Story toys like a Woody a Buzz Lightyear and stuff and they were sending me pictures like you want this like jokingly because like as a kid I was obsessed with getting like a Woody doll and like I wanted like I wanted like no I wanted the one Andy has I don't want like because like they would have like these plastic versions oh, yeah, they would have like uh, shitty versions. Yeah, like are these black I'm like, no, I want the like the the, the stuffed toy one that Andy has. I don't want this one. Or they would it, like, be like jumbo size, and I'm like, no, like Andy's was small. I want like that. Like I want the exact one. <laughs> See, as a kid, despite Toy Story being about toys, I always thought the toys in Toy Story were kind of ass. Oh, I thought Buzz Lightyear was like the cool. Like, I was generally like, he is the coolest. Like the movie would be like, he's the coolest. I'm like, yeah, he is the coolest. <laughs> I'm kind of like, I don't know, like these are not dinosaurs. This is not Pikachu. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, you didn't like Rex from Toy Story either? Well, yeah, but he wasn't a main character. And plus, oh, yeah, he wasn't like the cool Jurassic Park toys we had back <laughs> in the day. Oh, yeah, right. right he right, was just right, a generic right. T-Rex and he was green. I wanted like my neon orange with purple dots T-Rex that roared <laughs> and crunched. Yeah, I, I would be... I am sure that if I saw Beast Wars as a kid, I'd somehow missed it as a kid, um, that I would, like, m complain, like, annoy my parents so much to the point until I got Megatron, like, the, the dinosaur version of Megatron. Because I'll be like, oh my god, the Transformer turns into a dinosaur? Holy shit. See, as a kid, I remember I did see B 
Beast Wars on TV, but my my only memory of it was like of the rat one. Rat oh, Trap. Rat Trap. That's his yeah. name. And I remember thinking to myself, I'm like, when is Digimon? <laughs> this is ass. <laughs> I've I've had that like I hated I am Weasel and uh, Cow and Chicken. I hated oh, those. Oh yeah. See, I didn't like because like he's like oh yeah the nineties is all about being disgusting. I'm like no. I didn't like Red and Stippy. I didn't like Cow and Chicken. Um, Red and Stippy was nineties, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah, I didn't like that or Cow mm. and Chicken. I didn't <laughs> like. Um, yeah, most gross out cartoons. I didn't like. Like, I was fine with, like, some of the Spongebob stuff. I mean, Spongebob got really gross later on, but, like, in the beginning, it wasn't that bad. Yeah, uh, Spongebob doesn't, like... Yeah, I mean, I don't know about recent, but, like, yeah, it was... Splinter episode, which... I remember seeing that Splinter episode live, and I'm like, what? (laughs) Yeah, uh, what else? I remember, because, like, Cartoon used to do this thing, like, you can vote, and whatever cartoon wins from the choices, it'll marathon the whole day. And I remember Cow and Chicken, I think, one time won, and I was so mad. <laughs> and, yeah, like, I remember I was never a big fan of, like, gross-out stuff, because apparently that's what kids were into. And like, I remember... Oh, get like, the toy that, like, snot! I'm like, yeah, uh, I, I, I remember, as a kid, having, like, very detailed discussions, like it was the most important thing in the world. What the fuck is the red guy from Cow and Chicken? Is he the devil? What is he? And then, I remember having the Cartoon Network racing game, which I played a lot on PlayStation 2 as a kid. and. He's just called Red Guy. Yeah, I think that's what he's referred to as the show too. Really? Oh, okay. Because I, I was so. like, I, wa- I watched random episodes. See, I, I think I told you as a kid, since my parents were pretty protective of what I watched, mm-hmm. I couldn't really watch a lot of Cartoon Network shows. Oh I no! Out. For me, my parents were like, "Well, Cartoon Network is for kids. Watch whatever's on it is okay. It doesn't matter." Yeah. Uh, my yeah. parents were completely fine with Nickelodeon, but Cartoon Network, be like, because I I explained this multiple times to you and on the channel but for those who don't know like when i was a kid i was like the most precious little snowflake <laughs> i didn't say shut up or stupid those were like the equivalent of just dropping the f-bomb um like oh that silly guy um I, I was like that so like my mom did like a lot of cartoon network shows because she thought they said stupid too much and I remember I really wanted to see Foster's Home of Imaginary Friends, and she was watching the pilot with me, and they kept on saying Foster's stupid. Foster's is okay, like it's yeah, but like they kept on saying stupid in the pilot. Like, oh, you're so dumb. Oh, you're a moron. Oh, you're... Stuff like that. Which again, for me at the time, that was like a, a quill of them and calling him like a jackass or something. <laughs> and my mom was like, I don't know if you should be watching this show, Shaheen. If they say stupid one more time, I don't think you could watch this show. And like I remember, I was pray to dear god because i love the concept i'm like oh my god imaginary friends um so i'm like oh please god don't say stupid (laughs) (laughs) wow okay they were fine with a lot of nickelodeon shows i don't know why see i did not know because obviously like in the middle east where i was like cartoon network was just cartoon network disney channel was just a disney channel nick was just nick i never heard of adult swim ever in my life or like any of these like family guy simpsons because they were always on other channels so when i went to canada the first time to visit my like my cousins and stuff i remember her mom like my aunt basically being like you can't watch tv after this time not because we have to go to sleep it's very early like eight nine o'clock like it's "Eh, that's pretty early why and then like because apparently like it would switch to like the more adult cartoons like family guy simpsons Yeah, this other one was it uh, about teenagers in a mall. I can't remember the name now. Oh, um, 16. Was it 16? I think maybe it was 16. Yeah. Uh, yeah that actually just did not air on Adult Swim, but it probably should have. <laughs> but, but yeah, anyway, so like, and I was like so confused, like, why? It's a cartoon. It's a cartoon channel. Why can't we? Uh, and so, yeah, like, the, that was like, it was like weird to me. Uh, that like we couldn't watch it after a certain time. But now as an adult, I get it, and I also for the longest time I thought like when I found it about I thought Adult Swim was just another channel entirely. I didn't know Cartoon Network at night just turned into Adult Swim or whatever. Yeah, you see, I didn't because I, I, I grew up in America, so I I knew that and like concept of Adult Swim really scared me because like Nickelodeon had an adult thing like Nick at Night, but they would just show like sitcoms. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. it was like Full House or. George Lopez or like Roxanne and Family Matters or something. 
Oh, those are on Nickelodeon. Nick at Night. Oh, right. But okay, but still like Nick, All right? Yeah. yeah. So and I remember I used to wake up like early as fuck. I, I, I used to wake up at like 5 a.m. I mean, I guess I still do. But yeah, and I used to like, you know, make, go make my breakfast when everyone's sleeping and I'll watch Nick at Night. And occasionally, you know, one time I, I, I went to Adult Swim and they were showing anime with Inuyasha. So kitty. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit! And then yeah, the anime movie. Uh, <laughs> Did you ever watch Toonami as a kid? Because that's one thing that I can't relate to with other kids. Uh, yeah. No. Right. See, when I finally was like, "Yeah, I'm gonna watch Toonami," it died. Yeah, like it was never a thing for me. So when I hear about other people, I remember like... the bumpers and everything, but I don't really remember actively watching it. Mm-hmm. Like when I was like really watching Cartoon Network, it was when Cartoon Network was in that phase when they were kind of embarrassed to be Cartoon Network. Oh yeah, that weird phase. I'm like, oh, that was uh, yeah. And they had those like weird dudes that no face and everything. Then they were doing all the live action stuff. Then like Tom from uh, I was gonna call him Sailor Moon uh, from Adults. <laughs> uh, not sorry, Toonami. Um, he changed, and there was also this like. Tsunami spinoff called Maguzi. Oh, I have never heard about this. Yeah, what? Like, okay. I think it was called Maguzi or something like that. It was a weird name. I'm like, where did you come up with that? So I remember all that. Stuff. And like, I remember I would catch like random episodes of things. Like, lo and behold, I remember I saw an episode of the Drum Island arc of One Piece, and I saw it, and I was like, this is weird. Who would watch this? <laughs> <laughs> little did you know <laughs> literally like five years later you're going to become so obsessed with this thing it's not even funny <laughs> uh yeah i mean for me it's like like i said before like my anime journey i hated it thought it was weird uh changed schools the new friend group i was a part of nonstop would talk about naruto like like their life depended on it uh, and they tried to convince me and like for a year i, I didn't budge and then, like, they talked about High School DxD, and I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? This show cannot be real. It's not real. And then they're like, no, there is. Google it. So I did. Watched it. Went up to the episode where the, the evil priest licks his own gun. And I thought, and I just, like, exited it, the whole thing, and I closed my laptop, and I'm like, oh, my God, what did I just watch? And I confronted them the next day. And they were like, what the fuck did you, what, is this what anime is? Like, what the fuck is this? Like, why would you watch this? Like, okay, okay, okay. This will not make sense to you right now. Watch Naruto first. After watch Naruto, this, this will make sense. This will make sense to you right now. Go watch a completely different show <laughs> meant for a completely in different a way, demographic. In a way, they were right. Because, like, once you watch Naruto, you like it. You can curious about other anime. Then you find out what anime is as a whole in general. They're like, ah, okay. High School DxD makes sense now. Which they, so they were right in a way. Like, yeah, oh, I, I guess I in do. a sense. It's just a really bizarre, like... <laughs> yeah, they were ahead of their time, man. <laughs> They should have made, made the, the, the beginner's guide. <laughs> yeah, so then yeah, I watched Naruto and I'm like, this is like, okay, this is like this is fine, but I don't see like, like I, I didn't see like why are they obsessed with this show? Like, I don't get it. Like, what's so like crazy about the show that they have to talk about it every single day? And then the tuning exam uh, arc started and I'm like, holy shit. Okay, they were right. Television. Yeah. They were right, and then yeah. Now I'm guaranteed I'm a bigger fan than any of them of anime, and obviously like I've now ascended to Toku, which yeah. <laughs> you, you've become you, you've become a higher level being yeah. from this planet. Correct? Which like my other anime friends who are like into anime, but like f- find Toku weird and just like and, like basically Power Rangers. They're like, why? What? Why do you? What is this? And I'm like, See, we're not star seeds. We're weeb seeds. <laughs> We're like above trying to bring healing yeah. to the anime community. Yeah, yeah. I try to explain it to them, and they just do not get it. They're like, this is just Power Rangers, but like different outfits and stuff. I'm like... Bring them to me. <laughs> no, I, I would show them your video, and they would still wouldn't get it. That video, like, w- which one, though? Was it the Kamen Rider one? That one needs no, 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 the Rider. introduction to Toku one. Because, like... Okay, that, that one, but that one's old. Yeah, I know that was all, but like yeah, that's what you had at the time. Maybe, yeah, which, maybe you need maybe to make an Ultraman, update. My actual Ultraman one's probably better. No, but like, that's specifically about Ultraman. I don't want. I want them to know about oh. all of it in general. Oh, like, because okay. you mentioned like, like Godzilla is also Toku, and I have to mention like, hey, you like Godzilla? Godzilla is technically Toku. 
And they're like, okay, but Godzilla's mind, fine. Mind fuck them being like, Star Wars is technically an American film. So it's fine. That conversation does come up because when I tell them special effects and they're like, but like everything has special effects. I'm like, then I then I tell them like, okay, it's the same like, and what's an anime? What's a cartoon argument? And then then they get it like, but, yeah. so they like, but then the conversation just stops there because they're like, okay, I, I get the because they know that argument already, so they don't want to like rehash it with different words now. So, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just be really antagonistic and just be like, Tokusatsu is what superheroes should be like. <laughs> <laughs> What? <laughs> Mike drops. <laughs> just, just drops. What did you mean by this? Because mm-hmm. yeah, I remember I was showing Build uh, the first episode of Build where he's like fighting off the first monster, gets on the bike, goes over the wall, and I thought, my god, this is amazing and so much fun. Or like that, his rider kick where he goes down a graph. Oh uh, yeah, that. Yeah. yeah, and I was like, sh- I show that to Saad, like a friend of ours, and he's like bro, this is shit. I'm like, how is this shit? This is amazing. And he's like, that's nah, shit. And I'm like, okay. Yeah, go back to your CW show, bitch. <laughs> I'm pretty sure like he was watching, that everybody was watching. That's when everybody liked the CW, exactly. like Arrow, Flash show. So that's like, exactly yeah. why I said that. Like, I, I, <laughs> there's so many times I'll see my parents like watching some like trashy ass show. And I'm like, <laughs> you know how much anime or how much to watch? It's like, <laughs> <laughs> oh. factor into your mind but of course there's probably some elitist you know how much fine cinema you can watch Falcon instead of this uh, cartoon you could have watched Lord of the Rings or Power Rangers yeah. I'll say to that person there's no giant robots in there yeah that's probably I was. Yeah, there's no giant robots there's no monsters I mean Lord of the Rings probably has that but you know it doesn't have like an elf girl with like bouncy boobs made of jello so <laughs> There are elf girls. Uh, are they in like bikinis with like magic? Spells? No, no, no. They're they're in full on. Okay, dre- so fuck you, Tolkien. <laughs> <laughs> they're in full dresses, man. <laughs> okay, they look really pretty, nonetheless. Like I don't know if that sways you. <laughs> uh, uh, there's male elves as well. I don't know if that's, that's your true. Story. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> They dress slightly. I don't know. <laughs> uh, no, they uh, kill a lot of things. If that makes you happy, maybe. Maybe <laughs> they transform into some cool elf armor. Okay, you know this is a good question. What's the most normy thing you want to see but haven't yet? Want to see? Yeah, but you haven't yet. Like it's something that like you know you probably will like. But, like, you just haven't gone around to it because you've given other things priority, but, like, you, it's, like, you want, like, what is it? But it's, I mean, it has to be a normie thing. There's probably a lot. Like, there's a lot of, like, prestige I... television I haven't seen. Like, I, I, I did see a season of Breaking Bad, and I thought it was really good. I want to see Breaking Bad. Mm-hmm. Um, I guess X-Files and Buffy the Vampire Slayer seem like, or Doctor Who. Actually, I don't know. Doctor Who kind of has its own niche. Like, <laughs> I've heard people call it the British tokusatsu. Oh really? Ah, it's interesting. Children, <laughs> interesting because like, I also want to see X Files and Buffy and stuff and Breaking Bad eventually someday. But oh, like hour long episodes, I'm like, come on, man! <laughs> it's a movie. <laughs> I really wanted to see like one of the like Lois and Clark shows, but like the pilot episode was like two hours. I'm like, bro, what? <laughs> That's either the it's. I think it's the first two episodes probably together. I know, but like at that point, just make a fucking movie. <laughs> Oh, oh god this is not a v cinema this is the main yeah, show dude, like, I, I, I need tv shows to be 30 minutes <laughs> and plus maybe cut someone off for like the, the 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 opening the ending and like the recap so it's probably like 24 or 20 minutes yeah but american tv shows don't do openings and endings. Dude, so. anime, anime is starting to do that shit too i like oshi really? which came out this season came out with like an hour-long episode and then um I'm loving the manga right now. I'm up to date, but I always forget how you say the name. It's like World End Freyren or something. It's about like this elf girl who was part of the party of the hero that slayed the demon king. Mm-hmm. And since elves live a lot longer than humans and everything, she outlives her whole party. And it's kind of <gasps> oh. her adventures after that journey. Oh, what's it called? Uh, I think it's like Journey's End Freyren? Freyren? 
Oh, that sounds getting interesting. getting an anime soon, and I'm trying to rush that video where I talk about a bunch of fantasy manga before. Turns out every single manga I'm talking about in that video have all gone anime announcements. <laughs> I really need to. I don't want to look like a normie. I have to recommend underrated stuff, man. Now, now they're all in the mainstream. <laughs> Except one. But that one kind of has a problematic element to it, so I don't really want to highlight it too much. But anyways, mm-hmm. um... So apparently the news just came out for that anime adaptation. It's going to get a two hour long first episode. Which is a movie. Yes. <laughs> I'm like, anime, please don't do this to me. You're going to... <laughs> don't, don't start having hour long episodes. I know there's people like, yeah, I'm like, that's the reason why I like anime. <laughs> Easy to digest. Jeez. Yeah. Because there were a lot of things that I just assumed you have watched like Indiana Jones, X Files. I, I watched it. Yeah, I haven't watched the third one. No, but like you've watched them. Like, like I've watched those constantly. Like, I but, but like you, the fact that you've only seen two once and you haven't even seen the third. I don't watch yeah. that many movies. I really, really like. I I've been going to the theaters more because I do like the theater experience. Mm-hmm. I, I I do want to get like the Regal Unlimited membership because it kind of pays for itself if you see two movies in a month it pays for because movie mm-hmm. tickets have gotten really expensive and don't get me started in fucking american you know, concession prices <laughs> fucking rip off dude yeah. it, i got two slurpees from the theater yesterday it was 17 dollars oh so it is essentially ice blended with some sugar syrup yeah i'm like what the f- I could go outside to 7-Eleven and like get the same shit for 89 cents. What are you doing? And I only got it because my brother was feeling down that day and he loves watching a movie and having a Slurpee. And I'm like, you know what? I'll join him too. Then I regretted it. I paid like $17 too much for this. uh, It was a good Slurpee. It lasted me through the whole movie. Uh, we saw like no hard feelings, which was a comedy. Oh, and that's probably the most normy thing I've seen in like months. And the only reason why I saw it was because my brother saw the trailer, one of my brothers, and he thought it was really funny. He wanted to see it. He normally doesn't like going to the movies, so I'm like, fuck it. You know, he wants to see something. He's my little dude. We always hang out. I'm going to take him. We're going to see this movie. Was it good? Yeah, it was it was a funny little movie. It's not like I'm going to super remember it outside mm-hmm. of like a scene where like Jennifer Lawrence is like bare ass naked and fighting dudes on the beach. But besides that, like, oh yeah, this is the one they showed that she shows her boobs, right? Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. She like no, I'm like she gets to a full ass fight scene though. I'm like, damn, this is like a Kazuo Koike monster. <laughs> <laughs> you're guaranteed, you're the only one in the fighter theater who is thinking that. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll take that claim. No hard feelings. Has a casual quake like fight scene. There's my review. I mean, it was a fun little comedy. It was like, you know, it's like one of those comedy movies you watch. Like, oh, that was funny, and then you kind of really don't think about it that much outside maybe like one or two scenes. Mm, okay, all right, yeah, it's kind of that. Kind so of you've thing. seen No Hard Feelings, but you've not seen the third Indiana Jones movie. If this is fact, people, I want you to write it down. I want you to remind <laughs> Shaheen and like pester him about it. <laughs> and then, sure. And then yeah, uh, they like, made it this far. This is like uh, we're at the two hours thirteen minute mark. Yeah, and and then uh, and then he'll he'll get so annoyed by it that he'll be like, you know what? Another ten years for Indiana Jones. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm like Indiana Jones. Fuck that. <laughs> oh god okay, so, i was i was slightly t- i kind of released a couple of years for vinland saga <laughs> because i did see a panel that was like beautiful i'm like you know what maybe I'll, i might read it yeah, that's that's like, the whole that's the whole manga dude like i don't know what they, they, you, you could pick any any panel and it's like oh my god this could be beautiful no like, not in I, terms of art it was just like i forgot someone like i'm not sure if it was edited it looked like it was real but it was like someone <laughs> going up to the, i'm assuming the main character it's like listen you don't need to hurt anyone. You have no enemies. Like, there's no need for violence. I'm like, holy shit, that's beautiful. And then the, I'm like... That could be the dad to the main character, because that's where it started. Uh, like, the whole, like, you have... You know, there's no reason to kill anyone. You have no enemies. Our Viking culture, like, basically brainwashed people into being killing machines. But, like, you don't... There's no reason to kill. There's no reason to hurt. You have no enemies. Yeah. See, you know where, where my brain went? Well, I saw that, though. Oh, God, where? 
Uh, okay, <laughs> that's that's fine. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah sure. All right. I was expecting yeah. something much worse, but... Okay. <laughs> he was like, common writer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was like, you know, I don't know, this one episode, this one common uh, writer, the show era or something. No, like. I ever had, I told you, I went through a phase in university where, like, common <laughs> writer was like, my Jesus. Like... <laughs> <laughs> Who would common writer want for me in this situation? <laughs> yeah, but like you shouldn't listen to every common writer. Like I think Aruto yeah, has yeah, a lot my, of yeah, common writer zero one is like I was mm-hmm. listening to O's. Ah, uh, okay. Mm-hmm. Which now I would probably listen more to Kuga because like Kuga's like I need to finish Kuga, but after Metalda probably. Me. Yeah, after Metalda probably I'll do Kuga. Yeah. <laughs> it's like Kuga and Superman are like like. Oh wow! Okay, that's big. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> like that's a superhero. <laughs> None of these assholes and costumes. <laughs> oh man, man, I can't also wait because like I think they announced that Shin Kamen Rider is going to be on Amazon Prime in oh, July. Yeah. So like Can't finally, because I'm in Canada, so they're never gonna release it here. So yeah, that sucks. I mean, like normally they do at least a North American release, and like you know, yeah. this one's like not American. Was, Did you like, see guys, it? it was, you could have seen it, right? It came in the most like. Bad oh yeah, when the Wednesday, right? Yeah, it was like my mom's birthday on the Wednesday, and then like, oh, we'll have another showtime on a Monday. But like Monday, I'm busy. It's like the first week of work, and like my dad's also off on that day, so I'm not gonna be like, peace, guys. And like also, like it was limited release, so like only certain theaters would have it, not all the theaters. Mm-hmm. So one of the like the, the the closest one to me was like it's normally a 15 minute drive but it was like monday night it's probably gonna be busy around that area like when they're showing it i'm gonna run into traffic like especially because like right now in vegas they're trying we're gonna have like an f1 tournament here and they're trying to build all these stadiums because they're really trying to get the sports crowd to come to vegas these days so like all Uh. this construction has been really backing up the traffic and they're also trying to turn vegas into hollywood too Mm, okay, yeah, I can see that. Yeah, I'm surprised it isn't already. But like, like sure. Mark Wahlberg's here, like all the time. Like, hey guys, fucking come to Vegas. <laughs> oh, jeez. Need a couple of Vietnamese people. Oh, no, no, <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's amazing what some people get away with, but yeah. <laughs> wait, what are you talking about? Like, what do you mean? What people can get away with? Oh, you don't know about like Mark Wahlberg's like past. Oh right, yeah, no, I, I know yeah. he's yeah, he beat up an Asian guy. Yeah, I'm, I'm aware. No, and apparently, like it goes a lot more. There's like what? Of, and he's yeah, like, I think he beat up like a black kid or something too. Oh no! Yeah, he's oh, God. Marky Mark's a funky man, and he's uh, connected to Transformers now. That's great. <laughs> that was such a weird. <laughs> no, he was in Uncharted. That was like the biggest miscasting. Oh, I saw right, life. yeah, he was in Uncharted. I'm like, what? I mean, that whole movie, everyone was miscast. I like, I think Tom Holland's cool. I guess I've only seen. Him he looks Spider-Man. nothing like the character in the video game. <laughs> Absolutely nothing. Nothing. He yeah. doesn't even act like the character. Nathan Drake is a serial killer, man. He kills everyone. <laughs> In the games, at least. And they bring it up in, like, the second game. The final boss comes to him. It's like, oh, I'm the bad guy, Nathan Drake? How many people have you killed? And then you blow him up anyways. Cause he's <laughs> but um, in the movie, like, I don't think he kills anyone. He's like, no, you don't have to kill anyone. I'm like, what the fuck? Oh, jeez. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, at least we live in a world where we're getting good video game movies now, like... Super Mario. Was Detective Pikachu, Pikachu good? i seen it, but like... I See, know. Mario, Sonic, and Detective Pikachu I would say are good movies if I was a kid. Yeah, I would, I would see that. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Like if I was a kid, I'd love those movies. I'd be like... Well, see, if I was a kid back then, if VHSs were a thing, I'd be like, you know, rewinding them, watching them over and over again. Like, you know, the Pokemon movie, the Digimon movie. Like, I mean, I did that with like the first Pokemon movie with Mewtwo. Exactly. Uh, like when well, now we watch them these days, you're like, okay. Yeah, I did that. I I watched Batman Forever way too much as a kid. That I should have not. Is that had. the one with Arnold Schwarzenegger? Or? No, no, that's Batman Robin. Batman Forever is uh, him is Riddler and Two Face, but they're both act like Joker. Uh, <laughs> ah. <laughs> yeah, well, that's the one with um Jim Carrey. 
Yeah. yeah. And uh, Tom. Oh, Tommy Lee Jones. Yeah, Tommy Lee Jones. So yes. Call him Tom King. I'm like, wait, no. <laughs> And yeah, he writes Batman. Uh, <laughs> like, God, it's still like I would. I like the Sonic movies again. That's like my first. New, I've I've got Sonic Mania now, which is my first Sonic game, which I'm playing. Um, and like, uh, I, I was like, I don't know why it was because I thought it was. It's yes, it's a two D Sonic, but it's a, it's modern. So I thought there'll be more explanations. Like there might be like a cut scene in two bit and stuff. And then I looked it up and I'm like, oh, the bird thing is just from the movie. It never existed before. I'm like, oh, what? <laughs> yeah, sometimes I forget like how much of that stuff you, you don't know about. <laughs> yeah, I know. I, 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 again, I'm very new. I know there's yeah. a knuckle, there's a tails, there's a shadow. He, he has there's a, gun. a knuckle. <laughs> singular, singular knuckle. <laughs> no, there's a knuckle, there's a tails, there's a shadow. He has a gun sometimes. Um, Dude, I swear that third movie he needs to like lean in a little bit more into the PG. He needs to have a gun and he needs to say damn. But Only people didn't that. like the gun, right? They made fun of it. If I'm we not mistaken, love it now. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh. dude, are you kidding me? As a kid, <laughs> and that opening, that, that was. I think I uh, told you I thought that game was too hardcore for me. I would like play that game. I'll lock the door, like lower down the volume a bit. Be like this kid. <laughs> God. see what i am interested in okay is if uh the the you know this if the sister-in-law uh, you know how is her relationship life going is she going to get a new husband are they it's going to going to have another wedding that's what i'm I, I i almost dropped off I'm like what the fuck are you talking about i realize, <laughs> I realize, I realize you're talking about the live action movie I'm like what are you talking yeah about? the live action like because you you want shadow in the third movie i'm like yeah but like what about the sister-in-law i hope and... i hope that's who we saw as shadow uses his gun on <laughs> Pulls well, up was, to her with a gun in her face. Where's the damn chaos? <laughs> she doesn't know what he's talking. He shoots her in the face. Yeah, and the sister-in-law wouldn't know, but the other, uh, the uh, the wife would know. The one of the main guy. I forgot the name. I don't know who they are. Like uh, I, they're uh, just human one, human two. <laughs> See, uh, in the movie, I was like, because I knew there was an extended wedding scene, but like every time a wedding scene showed up in the Sonic movie. They, it lasted a very small time, like you know, thirty seconds, forty seconds, a minute at most. I'm like, okay, like these are all short. Like I don't, and then, and then that, and then they they come into Hawaii via the portal, and it just goes on and on and on. And I'm like, oh my god, like who 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 signed off on this? Like why is this? Why is this here? Like what the fuck? <laughs> And it has nothing to do with anything. It doesn't have any repercussions on anything. Like, not even like the. I swear to God, it, like it had to be some kind of like brand deal. It's like you have to. Talk what to what him. brand was that? He was on a golf cart. Like no, but I'm... like in the second movie, like the, they kept on mentioning the hotel's name. Like the, the oh, Regency Four Seasons. Yeah, Four whatever. Seasons. Ooh, yeah. Oh, maybe that's why. Okay, I mean they mentioned Olive Garden quite uh, way too much in the like. Which, like yeah. Why like I have all restaurants Olive Garden like. There's literally a restaurant called Sonics that has chili dogs, which you don't know, but like that's apparently oh, actually I had the reference in the movie. That's his favorite food. Yeah, yeah, that's his favorite food. But like, I wouldn't know that's a restaurant. I would just like, oh, that's Sonic's favorite food. Like, yeah, no, there is a restaurant called Sonics that has no relationship. It's just called Sonics. I'm like, they didn't do a brand deal with that. I mean, Grand sonics is like a very like low tier fast food restaurant i really don't know that many sonic fans out there sonics <laughs> um, the restaurants yeah. and like um <laughs> i'm pretty sure because like we all know what a mcdonald's is i guess we all know what an olive garden is did they have olive yeah. garden in dubai i don't know but I, I i've heard it a bunch no there is oh. uh i've seen it in abu dhabi at least uh okay so like, yeah. i don't like there was a couple companies, like I think they were called like Land Group or something like that. They kept on bringing like American brands mm -hmm. to uh, or Al Shia. There was like a there was like two companies that were like dead set in bringing every single American brand into the UAE. Mm. <laughs> oh god! The only one I'm interested in is In and Out Burger because people like worship that place for some See, reason. So. As a Californian, which is where it's from, I personally think it's like one of the best burgers. Aren't you a Nevadian? Because Las Vegas. Well, I was born in California. Oh, okay. Never mind. <laughs> so, 
I mean, granted, I was born and I lived there for like six months and then I moved to Vegas. So for the longest time, I thought I was born in Vegas. Mm. Um, but anyways, uh, there, there's a lot of like they're more in like this part of America. They haven't really ventured out to like the other coast or Central America. So I still have in and out and like I've tried Waterburger, which is like the popular texas burger texas place. one yeah i've heard it that, that yeah. one's ass <laughs> well you're gonna make texas people mad dude they, they love... have in and out so they could they know superior burgers <laughs> oh bro people people in texas like like if you insult water burger you're insulting texas so <laughs> it's fucking good they just should learn how to do better bur- they're amazing with barbecue but when it comes to a good fast food burger chain they make the dry as fucking like this thing was left out in the texas sun I was not expecting us to discuss fast food places when we started. But Anyways, the Shake Shack is way too fucking expensive. <laughs> <laughs> I, is that a Shake Shack thing or is that a UAE thing? Or no, it's Shake also Shack. expensive here. Oh, okay. And then the Never burgers mind. are small. It feels like a, the, the standard McDonald's cheeseburger in mm-hmm. my hand. Maybe the shakes are good, but it's too expensive. Same yeah. thing with Five Guys. Five Guys is way too fucking expensive. My brother got like a drink, a fry, and a burger. It cost him $20. Hmm god that's too much yeah in and out it's cheaper the ingredients are fresh it's good <laughs> maybe it's my inner californian i'm like oh, that's a burger restaurant oh <laughs> uh, okay let's end it here like i think this is a nice we'll note to end I, was about yeah. to, I got too heated in water burger <laughs> <laughs> oh god I, I, if, if, if i if there's i wonder how many texans listen to this and get mad at you if you're texting, comment down below and let us know. <laughs> Dude, seriously, if you ever come to like, if you ever come down over here, I'll, we'll go to all the burger places. I'll have you decide as like a as a burger virgin. <laughs> I've had burgers. I mean, yeah, but you haven't had like an oh American, American burgers. Burger. Uh, I have had Five Guys here, like in Shake Shack. See, I had Five Guys in Dubai, and I thought the fries were way too salty. Hmm. Okay, I see. Mm-hmm. Not, okay, see, I will give this that in and out has the, the fries could be better unless you order them animal style. Then they're okay. But like okay. the fries are like limp. All right. <laughs> Anyways, yeah. we'll leave it off there. We're not sponsored by In and Out Burger, by the way. This is just Shane's. In and Out, if you'd like to sponsor us, come on, baby. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I applied for do... a job there one time. You guys didn't accept me because you thought I was really <laughs> qualified because I have a degree. But like, no hard feelings. You make good burgers. Go fuck that manager. Time, piece of shit. Uh, you can be, there'll be a future video. Falcon Punch recommends. <laughs> we're going to make a separate channel called Falcon Feasts, where I just talk about food. And we're going to make you, food oh, you've friend. thought about this, haven't you? This is not something no, you just came up with. literally on the spot. <laughs> 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 See, this is what playing as a uh, clay as a kid does to you. I mean, it makes you really creative on the spot. <laughs> My brain just made like a little symbiote. <laughs> All right, okay. Anyways, that's probably time because I don't know what the fuck that last sentence was. <laughs> we'll wrap it up here. Mm-hmm. Uh, Falcon punchers keep on punching, and we'll see you guys next time. Bye bye.